We got email this week. Yeah, uh, dude. We're busy people, dude. Yeah, email? Email about it. You have email? Yeah. Well, we have email, AOL, AIM. <laughs> oh, we, we literally yeah. can't have AIM anymore. Oh, yeah. damn it. Screw it. You know, for the longest time, Dan and I had AIM just to talk to just each other, even though Ooh. there were millions of services available. <laughs> Basically, we should have yeah. we should have had me do a song for this episode. <laughs> Let me see that tongue. That's just your name for our our current Zencaster session. <laughs> no, the, yeah, the, there's no bearing on like it has no relevance yeah, to the episode yeah, or Star Trek. It's it's uh, the they're gonna meet uh, Captain Tong. Really? Ooh. Was that his name? Or the, or the ship is called the Tong or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was. I see. I don't go straight to a thong. I think of like kitchen tongs. <laughs> oh no! I think I was <laughs> that. You know, I always go for the thongs. <laughs> oh, you you and your you and your Cisco like behavior. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking fuck. of thongs, uh, <laughs> Cisco never achieved his dream of being in a platinum game. One time, <laughs> there was this guy that used to work with Marvin and I, and mm-hmm. every time we would play the thong song by mm-hmm. Cisco the Dragon, he would sing it out loud. <laughs> And then he got let go, uh, and we were all sad, and we're like, for singing the song. No, he got let go because it was just layoffs. Yeah, and oh. and and I was like, hey, dude, the thong song for all time's sake. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, dude, put it on. And I just started fucking blasting it, right? And then and then later I found out that my supervisor was talking to to my boss, and they have my, their office is right next to or or. Our like dorm room that I yeah. called, yeah. and then <laughs> yeah, and it was the, called the, like the dorm. Yeah, yeah. The boss was like, "What is it? What is that noise?" And he's like, "Oh, they're giving him a send off." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Okay, I'm sorry. this is his Viking send off." <laughs> yeah, Vikings. Uh, oh my the God. Viking send off. <laughs> yeah, wow. Like you see, you see, you see a body burning in the middle of the ocean yeah. in the distance. You quietly hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the. the <laughs> Yeah, like, the, the kindling, the kindling Marvin, is you just got, a bunch of angels voice, dude. Oh my gosh, nobody here knows how uncomfortable the thong is to wear. By the way, so no, I imagine, I, I imagine. I've literally I, yeah, never no, worn a yeah, thong. Yeah. I actually don't know. <laughs> wait, yeah, wait. You said no one, but have you? Does that I, include you? No, no one other than me. Oh, okay. Oh, so, okay. You, so you have worn yeah, a thong. Yes, okay. Yeah, yes, 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 like, of course. I have a little, I have a, I have <laughs> unless, a wedgie. Unless I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge if anybody has. Oh, I've never, I never, I wouldn't, no, 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 no. Totally I wouldn't no, hold I wouldn't it against anyone it. to ever wear a thong. Yeah. Little known fact, <laughs> pretty much every. I only got far enough to realize that it was extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. You know, every, every, okay, every pretty much every single professional wrestler you see on television is wearing a thong. Yeah, because it it helps keep their junk really tightly compact and safe while they're and, doing. And, while and they're you don't want to see. You don't want to see the the, th- the Yeah, the, you actually the, don't want to see the, the yeah the underwear line. So they're the all BPL, wearing thongs. Yeah, BPL, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. The Undertaker yeah. thong. Yeah, thong, thong, literally thong. the 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 undead <sighs> dead man Undertaker was yeah. likely wearing a thong his entire time. A G-string career. or a thong? Maybe a G-string. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> it could be It could be either. I don't know, know de- how a G-string could on hold what's available, anything. You know? yeah, that's not really meant to hold anything. <laughs> it could be that no. with a cup. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hey, yeah. who's this voice we're hearing? <laughs> it's true. Oh, we haven't introduced. Well, let's, let's introduce Some the podcast. Some female yeah. energy. <laughs> yeah, no. So this is newbie Star Trek, everybody. Uh, it's not so, a podcast about thongs. We apologize. It's a podcast about many things, but hopefully primarily Star Trek, which we haven't yeah. made a good example of yet at the beginning. Uh, but so far, Ricardo uh, is joining us. Hi, Ricardo. Oh, hello. I'm the thong <laughs> man. I don't like to wear them or I don't, I don't, you know what? I don't judge. I don't judge. <laughs> uh, he, he's never watched Star Trek before. And also this week we have Sarah with us as well. Say hi, Sarah. Hi. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> And I imagine, Sarah, you haven't seen that much Star Trek either, right? No, I am probably a lower uh, level than Ricardo in terms of oh, being really? as foreign. Really? Because I thought Trek. you had seen it randomly with your, your dad. Uh, when you were yeah, younger. but very <laughs> random. Like, I okay. don't remember any. Okay. Uh, yeah. And you've been anything. watching it with me um, yes. whenever we watch the weekly shows, but that's about it. Yeah. So I'm pretty foreign. I know it's good and I've been enjoying it. Yeah. And also we have Dan and Dan has seen more Star Trek. than Not yeah. much more at this point. But you have um, at least seen all of them once in a marathon and TNG at least. Wait, all of the what's? 
all the TNG, right? You saw it all in a marathon once. I think you said that, or am I crazy? You're crazy. Oh, I'm crazy. No, that, was, okay. that was I Love Lucy. You watched all the <laughs> I Love Lucy episodes, <laughs> oh, well, sure. which are amazing. Dan, Dan has seen some Star Trek, and I've uh, watched all of TNG at least once. So these are our our expertise levels. I'm not saying I'm the expert. I'm just saying but you by de, fac- de facto, I, you're I the have, de facto. I have expert. I have more opinions. You are the least <laughs> blind of us all. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Marvin. By the way, I don't think I said my name. Marvin, so I'm Marvin. definitely has has opinions. <laughs> if, I will say <laughs> this: if you're a new listener and you're just getting into this, you're like, "Hey, I'm going to start with this episode. This is my favorite episode." Guess what, dude? If you're easily offended, fuck you. You're going to be insulted, dude. <laughs> you're you're going to be offended. Stop <laughs> listening right now, dude. But if you like to party with us, then hang out, man. Hang out. Yeah, hang out and talk. Talk about the emissary with us, or not talk about it. Listen, you don't get to have a say. Uh, put your put your put your thongs on, grab your yeah. gear, yeah. Sit back, relax, yeah, and listen to us shooting the shit about the emissary. Yet another Klingon centric episode, which Sarah and I spoilers have very different opinions on. So Is that right, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. can't really? be more different. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, uh, this well, episode. Well, 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 we want to hear it before we go into it because remember how my opinion sometimes changes with, while while this episode's going. Well, okay. Well, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna say that I like this episode a lot. Actually, I like this episode a lot as well. Okay. And Sarah does not. <laughs> this was the worst episode I've seen thus far. <laughs> oh. I would love I'm to sorry. hear why. I, I find that fascinating. Uh, but yeah, that's also partially why I thought it'd be a really interesting episode to bring Sarah. Because I was extremely I, bored. I think the episodes and I'm are never more interesting. Bored by these episodes. <laughs> yeah, I think really the episodes bored. are more interesting when um, we have disagreements because we get to mm-hmm. discuss more points instead of being like, yeah, that's true. And then we move Dan, on. So. You hated it? Liked it? I liked it. You hated yeah. all the you hated all the thong talk. So, <laughs> <laughs> so all the guys like it and the girl yeah. doesn't like it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, this is going to be one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, the emissary, in any case, it first aired on June 26th of 1989. Dan, let's go around the sun so you could tell us what happened around that time. Slingshot. That's a type of thong, isn't it? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> way, to, way to tie the theme of the episode together. <laughs> All up in a little thong. <laughs> On June 21st, the Supreme Court, our beloved SCOTUS, ruled that it was okay to burn the U.S. flag as a political expression. Because oh, free good. speech is pretty cool. Yeah, I know yeah. that's a very controversial opinion to have, but this is America, damn it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Talking Today, good. Yeah, Wait, I thought good. you could get arrested for that. Is that not true anymore? No, that that is what changed it. Oh, okay. Got there it. you go. Burn all you want. And you but can't you, step you, on you it, right? Cannot, you cannot wear flag thongs. <laughs> mm. <laughs> there, there is a there is a weird. You can sell them though. You, you can, can sell buy them. and sell. Yeah, you can buy and sell. I think them, there's like some sort of like them. government guideline where you can't yeah. wear the American flag as like clothing or something. But like you can't throw it away and you can't no. step on it, right? No, no. Actually, or you, you know what's so funny is that all the idiots at the Trump rallies are wearing flag stuff, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's against it's against the yeah. flag code. You're not it's against to wear. It. There's yeah, a flag yeah. code. Yeah. Just like but a set not, of guidelines, but I don't think they're laws. It's they're not, not the law. law. No, they're not the law. It, yeah, it, yeah, it's frowned upon, but it's yeah. not. Uh, it's not illegal. Yeah, right. yeah. We, we could right, fucking so. look your way and, and be like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> ugh. <laughs> a thong that has stars and, and or hates America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. the thong is covered in stars and stripes. Ugh. I doubt guys <laughs> will see someone wearing an American flag thong and be like, "Ugh, that, everything's great except for the American flag thong." I, I just, I can't. It depends look. on who's wearing it, though. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two days later, on June 23rd, we got release of two notable movies. One, Tim Burton's Batman. Oh, Ooh, this is okay. a big one for him. Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. And it's a really big one for me, yes, because it's one of my favorite movies ever. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't nice. know that, dude. It, you, it, I'd probably yeah. say it's kind of formative for your like opinions about pop culture in general, I think. I would, yeah, you could say that. I, I like it's so like intertwined into my being that I can't really uh, articulate how or yeah. uh, you, but I'm sure and, it contributed and arguably that movie set the tone for what Batman should be like for decades like uh mm-hmm. well it definitely allowed the animated series to yeah. be a thing exactly. uh, which was uh yeah probably more formative for my um like you know superhero pop culture experience than anything else like especially the music took a lot of notes or like cues hot cues from from the movie score 
Danny Elfman score. Like it's kind of like um, oh. it was mostly the it was mostly the opening credits that like they just That's true. like straight That's up true. took took the the theme from the movie. But yeah. then after that, Shirley Walker kind of like just did her thing with it. Um, but boy, do I miss orchestrated soundtracks on cartoons. <sighs> the Clayface episodes theme is one of my favorite themes in general of all time. It's so yeah, good. like the the giving every villain like a very distinct theme. That was that was Shirley Walker's doing. Yeah, it's so good. Um, anyway, the other movie. What? Wait, wait, wait. Actually, before I before I move on, just a bit of indulgence Aww. on Batman. The best part of Batman '89 mm-hmm. is right after Joker has uh, buzzed the guy to death in in the meeting room. Uh, yeah, yeah. And as soon as he blows his palm and the, the doors like like they burst open and all of his henchmen run in, but there's one guy you hear going. Ah! <laughs> as he runs into the room <laughs> why does he do amazing. that i don't know yeah. but watch it watch that goddamn scene and it, it is so funny i watched it, that movie the in the guy- theater the, like, i watched that movie in the theater like two years ago and that uh, was the only one cracking up in my seat when that happened the, that one guy got the wrong direction <laughs> he thought it was like a <laughs> Anyway, he is my number one guy. <laughs> anyway, the other movie was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids oh, with ooh. Rick Moranis. Um, and that was actually d- directed by Joe Johnston, who went on to do The Rocketeer, Jumanji, mm-hmm. Captain America, The First Defender, and such and such. Oh, I forgot Joe Johnston did Jumanji. Yeah. Yeah. I literally he, forgot. He Look, I, I, I like the movies he's done, but he's kind of a... I don't want to say it, dude. I don't want to insult him, but he's kind of a Bush League director. <laughs> like he's kind of vanilla. Like like he makes good stuff because there's there's good scripts. Yeah, but he doesn't have any style. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would say his style is to. He's kind of like um. I li- and I like this director, the guy who I like him as a person. The Terrence guy who- Malick. Terrence Malick. Okay. <laughs> like Terrence oh Malick. no! Oh, the, the guy who directed like Austin Powers, for example. Um, um Jay Roach. Jay Roach. Yeah, Jay Roach. Like yeah, he's yeah. a good working director. Like, yeah, and I think Joe Johnson's very similar. He's like a good like yeah. working yeah. director, but you're not going to go to him to be like, listen, we got the Avengers. You yeah, wanna, yeah, or I like, mean, hey, Terrence Malick is like, look, I need a, I need a fill-in director. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> he, he, he was perfect. He was perfect for for um for Captain America because it's very like safe. It's very yeah. safe. It's very like it's there's like, almost no piece. tone other than America. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's so yeah. safe they couldn't even have Nazis in it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. They literally did not show any actual Nazi imagery. It's yeah. all fake Nazis with fake Nazi salutes that make them look like they're like hanging from hang gliders. Wait, what does a fake Nazi salute look like? Instead of one arm, it's both arms. So they lift both arms in the sky. What? Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. It, you it looks like the, it looks serious? like they're taking on like Superman. They're like, yeah. they're like, they're like, hey Hydra. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like they're just gonna fucking take off. Yeah, dude. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've never seen it. So wow, I did not know that. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's Captain America. It's <laughs> really okay. Dumb. And uh, I will conclude our trip around the sun, which concluded a few minutes ago, according to the music. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with this turned out to be a Supreme Court sandwich because on the day of airing, oh. June 26, that same old SCOTUS ruled that 16 year olds can receive the death penalty. Oh, shit. Because oh. teenagers are wow. evil and killing them is pretty cool. And I know yeah. that's not a very controversial opinion to have, but yeah. this is America, damn it. Yeah. Okay. I love to kill All right. They're girls. like, look, look, as soon as they're a zygote, they're fucking alive. But at 16, <laughs> we can fucking kill them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, you're just ex- you're just moving the timeline up a bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're just putting, oh, no. you're just fast tracking some lives. That's all. Yeah. Give it oh, life, no. take it the way. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? You should never take away your security on the internet. And if you yeah, want to be dude, secure on the internet, beautiful you know fucking say we do. She use ExpressVPN. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because you don't. As this is a, a term I've grown to enjoy. We had a whole text thread about the other day. So Nate, Nate's partner, apparently asked him, "Hey." What is that condom service you were talking about for what? the internet? <laughs> uh, <that's> because <laughs> because R- Ricardo has been regularly saying you don't want to raw dog the internet. You want to use a VPN. And that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, one of, another one of our friends, Sean, brought up the point that well, a VPN doesn't necessarily function exactly like a condom. <laughs> um, it, which is true. It's just true. It's yeah. it, like a router would be more like that. And However, well, well, you made you made <laughs> an analogy. Yes, uh, exactly. So I I, I, I counter offered this analogy. Uh, the VPN is more like a gigolo you pay 
to raw dog the internet for you. Yes. And then the oh. gigolo tells oh. you what the experience okay. is like. Got it. Yeah. yeah. And you tell the gigolo <laughs> exactly what to do and how to do it. And then he tells you what it feels like. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. But I, I would argue you don't feel any of it. With the, or with actually, Express or VPN, actually, the gigolo with, tries to yeah. replicate exactly <laughs> what he happens to him in real time as it's happening to him. <laughs> I, I don't like this analogy, dude. I don't like this analogy, I mean, dude. Could he just tell you what's what's good, and you can go there, like yeah. instead, like you want to try that, but you de- definitely don't want to go there. That's yeah, not good. Yeah. No, but he can bring it straight to you. The he gigolo analogy sure doesn't sound as good as just don't raw dog the internet. <laughs> yeah. 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 So Moral if you don't want, listen, if you if want you a gigolo, gigolo's jiggling you. <laughs> You want a gigolo in between, yeah, your internet or or, or yes. condom, whatever. Yes. A gigolo. You don't want a gigolo coming in the, in the night and taking your fucking bank account. <laughs> you know what I mean, keep keep those gigolos out of your fucking bank yeah. account. Get, get ExpressVPN. Yeah, hey, Express but you might VPN. get a thong out of it. Yeah, <laughs> ExpressVPN, one of the most secure VPNs out there because they only run on volatile memory servers, which yeah. means the moment the server turns off, everything's wiped. They keep no activity or connection logs. No turkeys. Logs. No turkeys. Yeah, yep. It, you just said it. Like they proved that they had no logs because the Turkish government actually once raided their servers and could find nothing. Couldn't nothing find one turkey. That's what we like to nothing hear. There but the, yeah. Nothing there but us chickens. Yeah. yeah. And even and, even, and, <laughs> and even with that security, your speed isn't compromised. I've tested it myself. ExpressVPN still runs 500 megabits up and down. That's pretty yeah. damn good. You could you download as much porn as you want, dude, <laughs> without sacrificing speed. And it works well on streaming services like Netflix. Actually, Sarah and I use it all the time for streaming services, and they Absolutely. are they are great. Oh, and you mean to to get extra services, <laughs> right? Yeah, Disney yeah. Disney Plus, huh? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. huh? Guys, European if Disney list- Plus. If you're if you're a new listener, guys, if you put on your VPN. Say you're in Europe. You get all the Fox movies for free on Disney Plus. You didn't mm-hmm. hear it from us. Allegedly. I heard it from an old man. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. If you want to get that deal with a good VPN, you can go to expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek. If you sign up for 12 months, that'll get you an extra three months for free, which means the whole package is 49% off, which is a very good deal for a VPN of this quality. Damn, and, homie. And our, and our usual disclaimer, I guess we'll say, like, in general, we think it's just good to have a VPN. It doesn't have to be ExpressVPN. Yeah. I don't have ExpressVPN, yeah. but I like VPN. But Dan and I do, and Sarah yes. does, because, you know, Sarah shares my ExpressVPN. So yeah. I, I will say that you should get a VPN in general. But if you get ExpressVPN, it does help out the podcast. So yeah. if you just go to expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek. You get that really good deal. We never yeah. got that deal because uh, they didn't have it when I signed up. <laughs> A few years ago, but you know, you can get it. So stay you've been a long time listener, there. first time caller. Yes, stay safe. And if you if you're looking for a condom service, um, we don't have one. If you if you have if you have one in mind and they want to be our sponsor, then then shoot them an email mm. and send them our way. Mm. Yeah, That's a yeah. potential. Yeah. yeah, I've been we, we have been approached by the ways. humans. Yeah. yeah, we have been approached yeah. by a lot of random sponsors. <laughs> we should get could. shirts called call the no, the No Raw Dog Zone or something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, we'll have to think about the slogan. But I mean, we've already been a- approached by a company about like you know shaving our nether regions. I'm sure yeah. a condom isn't far away. So. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the ball shaving company. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. Don't Balco. say their name. Balco. Don't say their name. I don't don't give even them. remember their name. Exactly. Don't yeah. say their name. We don't want to. Give I would them any love business. to hear a user testimony from one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Please, please try it out and let us know. <laughs> you know who I bet didn't shave? <laughs> Ricardo, could you please tell us what happened uh, in I this think so. episode? If you I think- had a guess, I think so, dude. <laughs> you think what they did topic. shave? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's. <laughs> Damn it! Let's new move on to the episode. If, you, if the new listeners are still We're listening, about twenty minutes in, guys. <laughs> we apologize. Um, I apologize for nothing. I kid. Um, all right. So the episode starts uh, off, and um, I think we already had an episode in. The, I think in the first season that started off with a poker game. No, right? the second season. Second was, season. Measure okay. of a Man was the first time a poker game showed up. Oh yeah, yeah true. Yeah. And then um, again. This scene was written by a person and set dress by a person who's never played fucking poker. <laughs> There's not enough <laughs> chips on the table yeah, yeah, to really yeah. have a good poker game. First yeah. of all, even a standard like you yeah. get it from Walmart set would yeah. would have way more chips. Than that. Yeah. 
<laughs> Someone, a PA, went and bought this this these this set, and they were like, "Are these enough?" And she, and then the decorator was like, "Yeah, sure, sure." <laughs> Let's all, let's we gotta let the background really dark so no one can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, who has a silver I spray mean, paint? This yeah. was this was the only oh the, this was probably the only part of the episode I liked the opening. Oh. I mean, I I do like this part of the episode I, because it felt d- like it felt like to me it was like you know like okay like say you're it felt like a play like a weird play where like you know you see the behind the scenes before the play starts and then we like follow them into the action as the episode starts it's like we saw like the pre-roll of the episode like five minutes before and they're like oh your call get on set now and then like ran in and then the episode like started and it was like really weird like just like really weird opening that like i've never seen before so that was like my favorite part I, I do like I when they have like scenes where they're like all kind of like hanging out and like mm-hmm. they have their guard down and they're kind of just playing around like recreational. Yeah, It's a better exploration of their character. And it does set a tone for what Worf is going to be like for the episode because like they call him the Iceman and then, you know, right. that's tested. Yeah, it was a yeah. good opening and that's about it for the episode. So just watch the first five minutes or so. <laughs> Wow. Here's okay. the thing about this episode is that the episode starts off and you're seeing you're watching the scene and the first thing I think about is like what kind of fucking work day is this? <laughs> what kind of fucking yeah. work day is this? That, that they could take fucking like an hour. They've been playing for at least an hour or two. Mm. It's I like mean, when we worked. The chips won't you know, tell you that, but <laughs> Gordon. It's like when we worked at the place we worked together. You know, there'd be downtime. I guess so. We would shoot Nerf guns at each other. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but a, po- a whole a whole poker game? I mean, well, that's a little. Marcel yeah, used to hours. set up fucking board games and play play that's board true. games <laughs> in the middle of the day. Okay, so, I don't I don't yeah. know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like that's more manageable than a poke than a poker game, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, a poker game you could stop at any point if they were playing for the actual cash, not tournament style. They could stop at any point, and be like, okay, we got to get back to work because. Just finish and out the hand and go noticeably, back. Noticeably, you know? the captain was not at the poker game. That's this actually the second a time. Thing, yeah. Second yeah. time he hasn't been invited. You think he pissed? Like, what the fuck? You guys are playing poker without me. You know, I fucking love poker in Earl Grey tea. Maybe he didn't want to go. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Well, it's a, it's kind of a trait of Picard that he has a lot of trouble socializing in general. Oh, he's or, antisocial. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a gambling it. problem. <laughs> He doesn't he want to relapse. Stays away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. He's like, what do you think? I'm, 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 why do you think I'm this age and I'm still fucking a captain? I should be retired. <laughs> Instead of an I admiral. Owe, I owe so, yeah. many, so much money all over the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a um, captain to pay off his debts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of of so, which, you know. <laughs> so this, this, this episode starts off and it's about basically keeping a poker face and being stoic and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, not enough poker chips on the table for it to be a real <laughs> poker game. So it's like, it was really, to, it was really hard to watch this scene. Cause I'm like, Oh boy. And like <laughs> he, he, he fucking data changes the rules when it gets to his fucking deal. It's, it's very really stupid. Like <laughs> we should be playing one fucking game all the way through. Stop fucking around. Um, and this game, particularly there's no, there's no fun in this game or no, or no, like there's no tension because it's, it's, you're dealing, fi- you're dealing all the cards at once. It's mm. not like it's uh, Texas Hold'em where you're doing the flop, you know? So right. there's, yeah, there's yeah. like tension yeah. and you're like, oh, oh shit. Okay. And I gotta there's, wait for- there's no real strategy. You're kind of yeah. just like saying, well, you can't, because yeah. at least the flop and, you know, the river in turn lets you figure yeah. out what's going on potentially with everyone else. Yeah. It seems yeah. like this rule set, you have no idea. I mean, there was it- weird tension between, the doctor and yeah you know what that's true that's a good point i did like they kind of carry over the the, the weird romantic tension they had from the previous episode to this scene what is going on Pulaski called him handsome yeah Yeah. Yeah. he's like all right handsome but then just like in in like a baiting sort of way it's like like you're ugly but i'm into that Uh, but i think (laughs) but i think some of it's genuine i think some of it's genuine i think when you call a big guy tiny <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like they're setting yeah. something up, right? Like, Come I feel over like here, little man, setting up a yeah. bit yeah, of a, exactly. bit of an ongoing yeah. thing there. And and uh, and <laughs> I, I dug that little like chemistry with them. I I do like them too. Butting heads or being friends, uh, she's always covering for him. You know, when he's got yeah. The, yeah. the the mumps or whatever he had. Yeah, the cl- Klingon measles. Yeah, yeah. So so they 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 get called because there's an emergency, and then they get back to the bridge. By the way, and. They must have taken like what a two hour lunch or something. That's what they're <laughs> yeah, here. Basically. Yeah. And they get they get back and and they basically kick out like 
the the B team, the B team that that's like, oh, finally, dude, we got a hailing, we got <laughs> an emergency. Yeah, I know they're like, they're like, we got, we finally get a good mission. Like, there's there's someone hailing us. We're 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 doing this. Those idiots are fucking on their three hour lunch. It's gonna be great. <laughs> and then they're like, no, get out, dude. We're back. Mm-hmm. Um, one good thing about this episode, no fucking Wesley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my true. god, he's not in it at all. Maybe he was sick that day. What it, I think it is like, is that a heck? child actor is quite expensive to keep around, so they probably try to minimize. But he's as in many like child. almost every episode. Maybe I'd no, say. no. This, the, know, he's in like one? I'd say sixty to seventy percent of episodes. Wait, he's not a child actor. How old is he? How old was he at the time? I think he was sixteen, so he would still be considered a child actor. He definitely yeah, wasn't. Either. He definitely wasn't an adult yet. That's for sure. Because oh, okay. he started the series when he was fourteen. Because he looks yeah, like he could be he like a, a minor, at least. he could be like a baby faced twenty year old. Like I'd believe it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would believe that, but I I I think he's he just started too young for that to yeah. be the case. And also, yeah. he's written like he's like five. <laughs> the quiet person, yeah. the, the way he asks questions like a child. <laughs> uh, you get to the moon of Endor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tells that that alien girl. Why um, aren't you married? Yeah. Why, won't, why don't you have a woman? <laughs> um, so so the episode starts off, the credits roll, and you realize like there's an emergency and they're headed to the thing. And then watching um some of the special effects of the outside of the ship, mm-hmm. they're getting better. They're getting mm-hmm. better each episode. Definitely. They're they're really um Improving. One thing you notice be- more now is that before when you saw the ship traveling through space, it looked like the ship was definitely just frozen and yeah. the space is moving around it and it looks really fake. Now yeah. they have a better sense of the depth. So it yep. doesn't, it looks like the ship is actually floating in space more than and, it is and, like a static object. In this episode, it actually had like lateral movement. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look usually so Usually it's stiff. just usually hers. Like it's just going across the screen. Mm-hmm. There's this more parallax in play. Yeah. 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 They yeah, got exactly. that VFX money now. Yeah. 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 They got the, uh, it's also what, what, what channel was this on? Uh, oh, CBS. Network. What network? CBS? I know CBS was uh, the studio making it. Or ABC. So. No, not ABC. Definitely not ABC. Because that would mean Star Trek and Star Wars are owned by the could be owned by the same company, which is not the case. It's definitely CBS that owns Star Trek. Well, no, property. I know they, they own it, but what, what channel aired it? I think CBS okay. initially. And then there's syndication, lots of different channels. Like oh, okay. UPN. Because I remember and, it being on the UPN. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was definitely on UPN. Because uh, UPN showed, UPN showed oh fucking Pokemon. Oh my God, Pokemon. does UPN even exist anymore? No, they're gone. They've been gone for a while. No, oh, wow. <laughs> you unlocked a memory that like I didn't know I had. Wow. Yeah, UPN was the channel that could oh mix God. Pokemon, Men in Black, Star Trek, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. UPN was so random. Weird Weird yeah. things yeah. into one station. Oh, I miss UPN. Yeah. Wow. And wrestling. It would it would be the station that uh, SmackDown would show up on. So. Apparently, it was a unique case because it was a show that went straight to syndication. So it was for anyone oh. who bothered to pay for it. Wow, oh. that's really fascinating. Interesting. Oh. No wonder he. No wonder Gene Roddenberry was so intent on making each episode self enclosed. Because if you know you're going straight to syndication. You're trying to make the show with the idea in mind that people will watch it randomly, not in order. Yep. Yeah, it's the perfect syndicated oh, show. <laughs> that's there actually that actually makes his behavior make a little more sense. Nah, he still does <laughs> shit. He still does shit. Um, his berries remain rotten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those rotten fucking berries. Uh, well, Wheaton is credited in this episode, but he's not in it. So someone <laughs> he was just in the background getting punched. well i bet you like <laughs> his agent like was like no if his name appears he must get paid it could be um, like denise crosby where even after uh this isn't spoilers but she dies crosby in the first season Nash and stills <laughs> <laughs> yeah when, when she when her character dies in the first season the rest of the series they still show her name you know so. yeah that's true that's true so. um so they're on their way to pick up somebody again ubering somebody by the way. Yeah, they do what, that a actually, lot. Actually, Ubering. this time, they're intercepting an Uber and grabbing it. Well, no, 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 no. This person's on a skateboard. <laughs> fucking <laughs> <down> shot his face. <laughs> Going so... to drown a hill and the Uber yeah, has to it, match speed. <laughs> you gotta match the speed and fucking suck them in. The person wearing uh, the skateboard is in a cryogenic coma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My claustrophobia was like top tier in this one. Now I'm imagining this, like, skate, no. this frozen body on a skateboard is going down like the hills of San Francisco, yeah. and, when, <laughs> and when that skateboarder wakes up, he's gonna cause he's gonna wreck some shit. Yeah. So, so they 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 talk to an admiral, and the admiral's like, "All right, guys, you guys are going to fucking intercept this this ship." 
and there's an emissary in there and you got to take them to this place you got to uber them there she's basically been shot at like a torpedo (laughs) exactly and and, and just shot like a missile with a human in it (laughs) yeah and basically they're they're like okay i'm sorry but what are the what are the what are the orders and they're like they're top secret and it's like i don't know once i heard the plan i was like why the fuck is this top secret? Yeah, that's true. Because they kept saying, once it, yeah. once you know, you know I will have so much yeah. discretion. And you're like, that doesn't There's, make any sense. Yeah, make, I had sense. this in my notes yeah. as they're literally writing in that we can't tell you until it's dramatically convenient. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's like it's so simple, just to just to be like, oh, there's some fucking time traveling fucking Klingons, and they're gonna the, wake up. The only thing angry I can think shit. of is that it's because the, the Federation expected there to be a sanctioned killing of Klingons. Oh, that is actually a, a valid. Was a hit job. I'll, I'll, I'll go with you on that. I think no, I think that a, might be the main reason, reason because they're because basically uh, going slightly ahead, her only suggestion is just kill them, right? Yeah, so, and they were yeah, sending yeah. her. Yeah, and they yeah. probably knew her plan. Yeah, yeah, she like she always like suggests killing. Yeah, he's like, we have this, <laughs> this planet of babies. Yeah. He's like, let's kill them. Yeah, but it's we that don't human know human side what, of her man. Yeah. He's like, nah, it doesn't matter. Let's kill, let's kill him. In many um, ways, that is the human side. Of her. Yeah, yeah. Are they sixteen years old? Let's kill them. Exactly. <laughs> The Supreme Court lets us now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, so I had relevant information today. <laughs> so anyway, so they're like, okay, so this this ship's gonna you got to intercept it. It's and they're like, all right, well, what's the ship? He's like, can't tell you that. Uh, w- w- but you have to be there on time. You can't be late. Yeah. And they're like, all right. So they go in oh, there. That'd they- be a sinister Uber if you're an Uber driver yeah. and you get this Uber request. And it's like, don't know what the person looks like. Don't know what they've got on them. <laughs> But you gotta pick him up. Yeah, on time. You can't be like, <laughs> yeah. Um. So they they go and intercept this thing, and they find out that they're in um. What is it? A, a transport thing? What is it called? It's like a the 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 probe they're in. Yeah, that's a probe. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. So basically she's basically a torpedo at that. Yeah, point. yeah. Basically, like someone on whatever ship she left from was like. <laughs> They're like, we gotta get this. We gotta get this fucking lady over to the other side of the fucking galaxy, like pronto, Fast man. Just, like, yeah, stuff and her some in. guys, like, okay, okay, yeah. hear me out. We hollow out a probe. He's like, okay, okay. He's like, we lay her in there. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh we God. put her in the torpedo bay. Okay, and we fucking shoot the shit out of it, and it's going at warp nine. <laughs> yeah, warp nine. <laughs> and the scientists who did it, their yeah. names were Jorel and Lana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or. Dom Toretto. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Fast and the Furious 27. It's, yeah, in, it's in space now. It's in space. Oh, my God. Yeah. And he's like, I think we should put her in a torpedo bay. Um, so, <laughs> and Jace, that, finally, Jason Statham would exist in space. And, mm-hmm. and so, so they finally catch up to the, to the, the flying torpedo. And they're like, all right, we got to get the tractor beam. And then, and then they, they're like, <laughs> Jordy goes to the, to the transporter room and he's like, trans, trans, transporter is ready. And all I could think of was fucking Jason Statham getting oiled up you know? <laughs> <laughs> and putting on getting his greasy bicycle pedals. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he doesn't slip. Um, but they, they, they tractor beam the shit out of the thing and they, they yeah. suck it in. Um, again, they never scan these things for viruses. They say mm-hmm. they do, mm. but everybody, as soon as they open them up, they fucking get in there, dude. Yeah. No one's, Pulaski never goes, hold on, hold on, let me, let me, let me get that little wand, the electric screwdriver, and just <laughs> wand them and see if everything's okay and there's no, like, Or germs. take them to, like, a quarantine bag yes. of some kind, yeah. right? Like, don't yes. put because, it in the main area. Because even though transporters yeah. do have, like, a scanning function, shit's gotten past it before. Like, the terrorists with their bomb. Yeah. It got mm-hmm. past them before twice. Yeah, what if so, it was like, a bomb? Yeah. What if it she was, like, a bomb, you know? It doesn't scan anything in the anus, so sh- <laughs> th- those terrorists had butt bombs. Um <laughs> And we don't know what this this lady has. And and I, at first I thought, man, she's a cy- she's half cyborg. She is she a Borg? What's going on here? Mm. Mm-hmm. And then she uh they she takes off the cryogenic mask thing, and it turns out it's a it's a beautiful fucking Klingon, you know. Mm-hmm. And Jaw-jabbing. you're like, whoa! And then and then she's like, oh, hello. She kind of has a she has like a Catherine Hepburn kind of like thing going, <laughs> like a transatlantic <laughs> accent. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, "Well, hello there. I'm a Klingon, and I'm buzzing about, <laughs> buzzing about." <laughs> and, <laughs> and, then, and then, and then, Riker's like, "Oh, is it because Weddle Catherine Hepburn was before. a wasp?" Yeah, and then, and then Riker uh, salutes her. I guess says 
hello in, in Klingon. I don't yeah, know yeah. these words. Yeah. And immediately I'm like, God damn it, Riker, you're trying to fuck her, dude. <laughs> you're Instantly. trying to fuck her, dude. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. And then I think, and then what comes to mind? Oh, maybe a threesome, a devil's three way. <laughs> Riker, <laughs> Worf, and this lady. Mm. That's what I'm that's where my head is. There's three penises in that three way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a there's an alternate version of this episode where that happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and let's fanfiction.net. Yeah, fanfiction. <laughs> Ooh, I will go there after this. Oh using, my god. Using ExpressVPN. <laughs> so no one knows I was looking at yeah, Klingon yeah. porn. You definitely want to hire oh. a gigolo to guide you through fanfiction. <laughs> yeah, Klingon porn, yeah. It is, it is a scary so, place. So, okay, so check this out, all right? She arrives in that little fucking shitty fucking probe, right? Mm-hmm. There's barely room for her in that mm-hmm. thing, right? Mm-hmm. Throughout this episode, she has like three to four costume, costume changes. She does. <laughs> Where does she get the things? I don't know. Oh, Where replicated. Does she get the Just replicated. No, her, her clothes were amazing. They were yeah. a statement. Yeah. You know? The last outfit she has with this really cool like red leather jacket, I was like, that's a fucking cool jacket. Yeah, Where she's got a jacket. <laughs> she's got like a cool like onesie, red, you know. We'll start with outfit. this one. This one this one is like a cool like gray yeah. like jumpsuit. Mm-hmm, and it's yeah. got like it's got like a triangle thing. It's it's very chic. I'd say it's for, like it's like if this, a Klingon this attire show? became like federationized. Like, yes, more, yes, yes. Like yeah, I like I like her outfits better than anything I've seen on. That's I true. Agree, I agree. It's, it's like interesting. Yeah, like of all the alien outfits that they've oh, yeah. devised, like exactly. It's the, yeah, it's 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 a really good sense. Okay, of, like, that's fashion. my favorite part of the episode. The fucking <laughs> outfits, yeah, especially I considering that. Yeah, like, like like Dan said, most yeah. of the times when we have a guest character. Their outfits are terrible. Well, like, what yeah. was that lady? The other lady, the one that was trying to like, she was like in heat and like trying to fuck everybody. Oh, the she mom. had some nice outfits. No, too. she didn't. I hated whoa, her outfits. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They who, were so which, ugly. They were fans oh, of Loxana. Yeah, Loxana. Yeah. 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 yeah, the mom. They were fanciful. Who is like in heat? Yeah. The worst was Riker's around. dad. Riker's dad with his weird oh, yeah. sweater, like <laughs> pearl neck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like so, some of like Loraxana's L- outfits, kind of like a gypsy Halloween costume. Yeah, I didn't yeah, like that. Not yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. kind of cheesy. Like, compared to this stuff, yeah, it, this like, is more know, my it's, style. It's a different like level. It. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It, those were like almost or like costumes. Got, these seem, these seem the, like outfits. Uh, yeah. The Irish lady, the the peasantry clothes. Definitely, clothes. definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's cleaning and just moving hair around. Yeah. Uh, pushing she, hay from one side to the other. Who needs to constantly wash her feet of so oh my God. or whatever. <laughs> Sonic showers on her feet. So, so this lady's like, "Yeah, see, I see you speak Klingon," <laughs> and then he's like, "Oh, I, I know a little Klingon," and she's like, "All oh, right," and then, um, and then she's like, "We're about to intercept this the, the ship called the, the Thong," and so they got to They got to They got to. Well, first of all, they they all meet in the conference room, mm. and and she gets there, and immediately you see Worf. And he turns around to see who's coming in, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh fuck, dude! Mm-hmm. Oh fuck!" He like, have oh. he has a look of like, "God damn!" It. I fucked her a while ago, and another. Yeah. Life well, no, I don't think I don't think they fucked. Yeah, I wanted I, to. I, I, I don't wanted think they did. To. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They were that. very close, probably at one point. Yeah, yeah. They probably That's got that to girl the. I almost fucked a long. They time probably got to the the part where you like dig their person's <laughs> nails into their goddamn hand. <laughs> The and then she part. was, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 we can't, we can't, we've gone too far with the nails in the hand. Not yet. Um, Not yet. We, can't, we can't go more than that. Yeah, yeah. Just the tips. Uh, just the, <laughs> yeah, just the top of Tio fingers. Um, so, so Worf is like, oh, ugh, ugh. not her. Uh, and they, they're like, everyone's kind of smitten by her. Even Picard's like, oh, ho, ho. and she's Hello, like, well, buddy. captain, uh, sit about, let's all sit about and talk about this problem. And so they sit and they, th- they, what happens is you got these time traveling goddamn Klingons. Mm-hmm. They've been asleep for a long time <laughs> yeah. and they're going to wake up and they're going to think they're still at war and they're going to cause some fucking havoc. Mm-hmm. These a bunch of, of general custers. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A bunch of fucking Trump supporters fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> they think they're still going to storm the goddamn Capitol. Um, so, they had a bunch of Rip Van Winkles on that ship, and they got to stop them. So, so they're, and then, and then her idea, what's this lady's name? Oh, it's really hard to like. Uh, Cal- good looking, Cal- good looking, Calaire or uh, Claire. 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 Yeah. It's like Claire. Yeah. I, it's, I feel like it's a Klingon take on Claire. 
and Klingon they just, Claire. So it's, Klingon, it's like that oh, Kayla. Oh, I, yeah. she's Klingon Karen. Or Claire, or Klingon, Klingon Karen. Mix those together. <laughs> Klingon, Klingon Karen. Karen. <laughs> Klingon Karen is like, hey, I say we just kill these fuckers. Like yeah. we show up and we just shoot them. And they're like, and the captain's like, whoa, whoa, whoa there's got to be another option. She's like, yeah, the other option is we just fucking kill them. <laughs> <laughs> But like, what I'm wondering is like, did they just all forget about this like sleeper ship, and we're like, oh yeah, we have to now that they're gonna wake up, we're like, oh shit, we have this problem. I can with. actually like, why, easily. Why is this like all of a sudden coming up? It feels like yes. now it's an I emergency. Can, I, can, I can easily imagine the Klingon Empire being like, oh shit, we forgot we have these guys out there because <laughs> they're really disorganized. <laughs> yeah, they're, well, kind, they're kind of like a warring species. Yeah. That, it's it reminds me of uh like German U boats during World War Two or even World War One. Uh, they sent them out on missions and they kept no track of them. You know the Germans. So mm-hmm. I can see it's a like, similar oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I can, so I can imagine this now. Yeah, so I can imagine the Klingons doing a similar thing where they're like there's probably dozens out. of such vessels. Yeah, there's yeah. potentially a bunch. Yeah. Well, they do say that the, they had gotten an email or some sort of telegram <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. eighty something years ago, and it was like, oh, we're going on this mission and we're cr- we're frozen. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, they got it. They got it. This lady wants to fucking kill them. She right. has no time for these people, yeah. but she's got time to flirt with fucking old Worf. Mm. Uh, she has a lot of time. That's my oh, yeah. problem with this episode. There's a yeah. lot of, <laughs> and they're like, they're like, all right, we're we're at warp nine, and they can't be late because basically, if these dudes wake up, they're gonna wake up one hungry, two horned up as <laughs> shit, dude. They're all horned up, hungry, and they <laughs> they see a Federation like outpost. They're gonna fucking shoot it down, dude. Yeah. So they don't want these guys to wake up angry. So they're like, let's go, let's get them in their sleep like vampires. Mm-hmm. Fucking put a stake through them, but instead of a stake, we yeah. sh- it's torpedoes at their ship. <laughs> uh, and and they're like, Kevin's like, no, I don't think this is a good idea. And then they're like, well, how long till we get there? And they're like, 15 hours. It's like, well, then why did we hurry to get this fucking lady if we had 15 hours? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Um, And she's got time for fucking four costume changes throughout this whole time. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Picard will not accept that the only outcome of this would would be the death of these Klingons. I don't why I don't know. I guess. Well, he's it's Picard the diplomat. Oh. You know, he doesn't yeah, guess want so. anyone to die. If he That's doesn't have never going to be his case. He's not Picard like. the Conqueror. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Don yeah. Credo. Yeah, I was. I was. Team, I was definitely team. Just kill them for sure. <laughs> no, you weren't. That's a lie. While we were watching the episode together, you were I like. Mean, <laughs> no, 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 that's the no, no, you misunderstand my position. I know I'm not like her and think that that is the only option. There are other options. I just believe that killing them is the best, to be honest. And just whatever, like save the time, just whatever. We don't need to think about it. And, but you know, I don't know, but apparently that wasn't the that that wasn't what this episode was really about to be honest no, that was that was, was the about, that was the d storyline here <laughs> yeah the the a storyline is also the d storyline if you know what i mean because it was about yeah. war getting yep. laid um, <laughs> that's what this episode was about <laughs> Yeah. All the storylines are about D. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> God damn it, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, which so, enterprise is this? <gasps> the, the D, the sixty nine D. Actually, it's a seventeen oh one D. Close enough, dude. Um, you could have given it to me. Yeah, we're close enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Fair okay. enough. Uh, nice. So, so, um, so she leaves. She's like, "All right, I'll, I'll, I'll be about and changing my costumes. See you later, Captain <laughs> Worf." And she walks away. And then Worf's like, "Oh fuck, dude, do I have to?" Do Picard this, makes her work with her. It yeah, with her. Yeah. He's he's like Picard's like, "Hmm, who's really uncomfortable in this room? Let me see." <laughs> right there, no, yeah. Riker wants to fuck yeah, he, her right he, away. He chose the most mm, uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, Jordy. No, he doesn't. He can't even look. He can't even see her. Uh, no, it's funny is that right. Picard. Like, there's no way Picard doesn't like have a a sense or understanding of like what the issue is. But he oh, yes, just doesn't he said give it a out shit. loud. It was pretty yeah. said pretty loudly. Yeah, he, he doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. Well, what's not. interesting? Well, I was just going through his thought process, and I was like, okay, why would you choose Worf? One, I, I thought he was trying to kind of be like his wingman, like you know, you know, you want that, you oh, want that P, that, this that is, K, whatever they have. Maybe I don't maybe, know. Maybe you know, it was like kind of like 
you know you <laughs> That's what their penises are shaped like. No, no, no. She was saying about her, her. Like her. her. I don't know what you call K. their their yeah. their P, their V, their K. I don't know what yeah. it is. But you know, I think he was like, No, you want it. Like you want this. Like this may never come up again. I was I was suspicious that he he forced them together because he's like, well, you're both Klingon. Yeah, so you guys should hang out. That's it's like absolutely. That. It's yeah. kind of racist. A little That's bit. racist. It it's yeah. like yeah. it's like if your yeah. boss was like, you're both Asian. You guys should yeah. work together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> still happens. Yeah, that absolutely was part of it. I yeah. think <laughs> sure. And and so so Worf is like, ah, I don't want to do this. And he's like, do you have a? Is your problem personal? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, what about professional? And he's like, all right, I guess I'll work with her. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Um, What's funny is that Picard like doesn't even like, he does, he has no like, uh, he's having no fun with the conversation. No. Yeah. <laughs> he's just staring at him like, he all actually looks like, really like, mad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck are you yeah. doing, Worf? Like, I just told you what to do and you're just f- fucking not listening to me. You fucking no, You'll thank me later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm trying to get you late and you're over here fucking cock blocking yourself. You yeah. Idiot. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. And then blocking you have your this, K. <laughs> yeah, yeah, blocking your way yeah. to K Avenue. Um, and, and then, and then uh, you have this scene where uh, this lady, um, Klingon Karen, she's walking along the corridor with, um, what is it? Uh, Troy, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> what, what have been, no, it's good. It's, it's good. It's just, Please don't worry. It's don't, worry. Every, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> and so, so Troy is fucking walking about and with with Klingon and Karen, and mm-hmm. they're having a fucking fun time. She's like, "Yeah, see, I'm half and half. What are you?" <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, well, I'm you know, I'm, I'm half half beta, alpha beta, and half." Yeah. Uh, human and half Albertsons, half Albertsons, and then she, she's like, she's, she's like, she's like, oh my god, we're we're like samezies, dude, but we're like, all havesies here, yeah, we're havesy babies, cool. And then she's like, well, you know, like I, I don't like my my Klingon half because it's a lot of temper. And I'm thinking, yeah, you just described being a Mexican. Yeah, I'm fucking always angry. I'm, I'm like, I'm always angry too. Like, you don't see me fucking suppressing it. I fucking let it out, you know. And, uh, and so, siempre enojado. Yeah, dude, that's my secret, dude. And, <laughs> <laughs> no, but and, do you do you work do you work out though? That's that's the thing is you know to deal with it. it. No, no, I, sh- yeah, I should be working out. Work I'm out. feeling Mexican rage. Yeah. I need to work out. <laughs> yeah, get the fucking erotic fucking workout in the fucking. <laughs> I told you, dude. I told Just, you guys. There's only two reasons to use a fucking holodeck: fucking and killing, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's oh exactly what happened in this episode. Yeah, yeah. In the same, in the same. Yeah, they used uh, the scenario. holodeck to its fullest extent. Yeah, yeah. 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 They were they were killing while they were fucking, dude. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Um, you gotta so, go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> there's some fucking android that's got to clean all the goddamn semen off the fucking holodeck <laughs> and the blood, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. probably a lot of blood. Well. <laughs> <laughs> a little My bit God. of blood. <laughs> yeah. um so so she's like yeah yeah see i keep my klingon part in order and so so she's like oh we're friends and we're gonna hang out she's like all right she's like well you can hang out here and and you know you'll i'll tell you where where um where wharf is and then she leaves and they, they they hit it off they're having a fun time yeah and then next thing you, next thing you know is that she shows up to where wharf is working which is a room that we've never seen before it looks it's really weird. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like it just got computers. I'm like, why don't they just? Use it doesn't look like a room that exists on the Enterprise. Like, it, it, yeah. it seems like an old set or something. It I seems like, like it's we've a room. seen Wesley in this room before, but I don't remember for what reason. It almost looks like remember the episode where they went to the planet with the crystal aliens, and they were like, "Oh, you're a bunch of ugly bags of water." And then uh-huh. uh, there was like a uh, mostly you know, there was like water. A, yeah, mostly there was like water. a there was a lab down there. That's what green it dust. looked like. That set where it was, so. it was like just yeah. flat walls with like boxy computer consoles. And yeah, nothing. Uh, it's it also dimmer it lighting. Kinda, maybe it yeah. also looks like the room. Remember who? Remember who? Who took the test where like someone was dying? Who the fuck was that? Oh, it was Wesley at the at the academy. Yeah, what was it? T- yeah. What, remember, he thought there was a, a, a like a natural disaster happening, and he did save oh, them. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it that looked like, like the room too. Yeah, yeah, it looked like that too. Yeah. Well, there's this room, and it seems like this room. If I'm if I'm being honest, it seems like Picard was like, "Hey, dust off that old room." 
that no. yeah. <laughs> so like there's a cot in the corner <laughs> yeah there's a cot in the corner <laughs> they don't need a cot dude they don't their... need a cot no. yeah. <laughs> that's the way the Klingons do it no one, yeah. no um, one comes if by we're, here if we're following the plot of the episode like Worf we're is not, in here Dan, we're not following the <laughs> <laughs> I just point, I just want to point out that Worf was ostensibly in this room to try to find alternate solutions to killing the Klingons yeah like yeah, this yeah. was the room how, to do that in how, how, yeah for some how reason how is he going to do that here even though he's never worked in that room yeah. before yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. always works on the bridge. Like, the best explanation come out. It's the computer simulation room. Yeah, yeah. which but is also, everywhere. Can they just, <laughs> can they just have Shut data? Up, though. Like data? Can you figure out? Go have sex with brain. her in this room. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she comes in and she's wearing a really, really sexy outfit. I love I so. her outfit in this when she walks it, in. It, she kind of looks like a Rustic. like an Avengers, doesn't she? A little bit? Yeah. Like she's wearing like a superhero kind of outfit. It looks like... Yeah, it looks like, a, it looks she's like a got like jacket. these like yeah. bracelet things and like these oh, like... Oh, the, the 15 rings. Yeah, there's like... like, like it could also be like yeah. maybe the fifth element. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah. very yeah. like... The fifth element yeah. flair to yeah. it. It's very French. Like, it's very like sexy, colorful, flashy... <laughs> like and she's wearing her best to this study session and she admits yeah. it yes. she says outright well i wanted to get into something beautiful yeah, yeah. yeah she does she does yeah. actually yeah. straight up and mm -hmm. she's not there to figure out how to save these claims no because no, he's just like we're gonna kill them that, yeah she's, let's move she's like that. look let's yeah. <laughs> step number one we kill them step number two i seduce you and we bang it out <laughs> yeah and, and she and he's like no why let's control my feelings he, he somehow is sean connery um <laughs> and so he's like you know he, actually you know what there's no clanking of keyboards in this in this in this uh in this no. space Timeline. There's no keyboards in the in the, the Star there's Trek no universe. Work, there's no work going on. Yeah, <laughs> but there's that's not one not... dude that that's like Marvin that he's like, I love fucking keyboards. I must have all the keyboards. Yeah. And he's like just yeah. fucking clanking away. <laughs> <laughs> there's one engineer who's really into mechanical keys. Well, and well that, this they, is his retro. fucking office. This is his office because he's like, we're tired of hearing fucking Tim clanking away these goddamn <laughs> keyboards. Put them in the fucking in the banging room. <laughs> his fucking Cherry MX Blues. Why does yeah. he keep getting those? Yeah. <laughs> Putting on every station. <laughs> this is this is a room that's soundproof because you can't hear the clanking and you can't hear the moaning, the banging, <laughs> the banging. Um, so <laughs> the yelling, the, yeah. the Klingons, the clanking. There's probably oh, the some screaming. screaming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, with Klingons. Yeah. Um, so basically, she's just flirting. She's just flirting this yeah. whole fucking scene. Yep. And she's like, "Look, why don't we do it the last time?" Blah blah. And you find out that like. Later on, you find out that they could have banged earlier, but Worf was like, we're not ready. We're not ready to fuck. Mm. Um, For all we know, I'll, I'll bring it up later. For I'll bring it up later, actually. I'll bring this up now. One of the computers in the background looks like like an arcade game, by the way. <laughs> it, doesn't it, look might, like it, it might be a redressed arcade <laughs> game. Yeah. Arcade it could be cabinet. a cabinet. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, it was probably centipede on, on that <laughs> screen. Like, right this there. is actually the arcade room. And Picard told them to get in there. It's like, oh, I have a date night in here. You know, and yeah. they're, <laughs> they're at basically a, a bar table. They're at a barcade, essentially. <laughs> and I would say this about this episode, about what I like a lot about this episode, is that the tables are turned. Where she's like, she's like, oh, baby, I just want to fuck, dude. And, <laughs> and, and Worf is like, oh, I want to get married. He's like very conservative. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and he's like, well, we've, we've, we've consummated. We've had coitus. We must get married. And mm -hmm. she's like, nah, baby, I just wanted a bone. Now we're done. We had a good time. <laughs> and now, you know, two ships in the night. That, I'd I, be out. I, I, okay. Who thinks this mm -hmm. is the first time Worf has had sex? I think it's the first time. No, I don't think so. It, it seems I, it like it's the first time. I think time. he's just a guy that, you know, is adhering to his culture, which is like, you know, if this is what you do. It didn't seem like it was the first time. You think it's he's, weird like, that you think he's one of the Duggars? To... He wears long fucking skirts and, and like has sex and then <laughs> no, he's got to get what married? What Sarah just yeah. said did stick out to me as kind of odd because like while Worf seems to revere like some, you know, sacred tradition or something, we've seen Klingon women and how... They act aggressive. With, they are, yeah. They, they they are very aggressive with their sexual advances to you know potential well, suitors. I, I think I think as the series, That's true. this is a, a mild spoiler, but as the series goes on, you come to learn that Worf's understanding of Klingon culture is like a super buttoned up, not realistic understanding. So he's very obsessed with like making sure everything's done by what he thinks is supposed to be Klingon well, that's standards. That's why I think that's why he 
did what he did, you know? But that makes me wonder if he's ever done that with anyone else. He's like a Mormon. No, no, no. Like I'd say that does lend credence to the theory that this, that this was his first time. It could be the first time. It could be a, you know, uh, I could imagine him being like, like that, anyone yeah. he fuck, he's like, oh shit, now I have to marry you. I mean, but what I got you pregnant. I have to marry you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, but that's what I also simultaneously feel like. That's why I didn't like this episode because of her. Like she yeah, you really annoyed didn't like her. the fuck yeah. out of me because every time, first of all, the little, the first conversation they had in that side janitorial closet, whatever area <laughs> um, that happens like four times. I feel like in this, I was like, we're having the same conversation. I just felt like we were talking what you mean in by circles. That. And then I was annoyed by it because she kept asking and pushing him like, what's happening? What are we doing? I'm like, you're the fucking bitch that's confused. <laughs> no one else is confused. And he's like, what the fuck are you? What do you mean? She's like, yeah, what? You know, like confronting him all the time. I'm like, and asking all these fucking questions. And he's like, honestly, I think he's pretty, he's being straightforward. Like, yeah, I, I don't agree. think he's being confusing. It's but it's her that's pissing me off. I, I, I would counter with two things. She's like hot and cold, hot and cold. But, but, but I think that, well, one, I would argue that's the point of her character. It's why they introduce her as half Klingon, half human. And when her yeah. talk with Deanna Troy, she says, I'm always trying to control this other side of me. So I think that's the point of her character. And uh, I think the other thing is that every time they do have the argument or like the discussion, I do think some of the the emotional notes are definitely a retread. But I think each time you, is expositional too. You gain a little more understanding of their relationship. And I think like you don't realize they haven't fucked until the fight scene we're about to come up on. And yeah. you don't realize that they were necessarily jilted lovers until they talked about it. You know, yeah, you, like you weren't quite sure. And each time they my do thing it. is like I only needed one of those scenes. I agree, the pacing is slow, but then yeah. we wouldn't have gotten those sweet costumes. Yeah, that's true. That's mm-hmm. true. Like that first scene inside costumes. the barcade, it felt like two people like the bangatorium. Yeah, <laughs> the bangatorium. <laughs> the bangatorium. <laughs> yeah, um, it but, like, felt we like didn't two people that. like yeah. just vague booking directly at each other. Yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah. absolutely. And absolutely. that that part is a little uh, frustrating for me, so I am glad that further scenes retreading those notes like did provide more exposition. I should have left that on the cutting floor and just cut that one now. Now that so <laughs> I've I've kind of got I could cut I, out like one or two. I've gone forward a bit and I've got I'm seeing a closer look at this costume she's wearing. It's pretty cool cuz it's like a leather jacket, but the leather yeah. jacket is just the arms. Yeah, yeah, I really like her mm-hmm. jacket. I think it's yeah, quite cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's something like Jim Lee would draw. Yeah, it's like a Scarlet yeah. Witch jacket, almost. Yeah, it's like the yeah. most modern kind of outfits I've seen, like, in this show, like... Yeah, that recently. doesn't seem... It seems contemporary. That's like something that's like, versus, I would wear. Like, oh, yeah. okay, I would wear this. It's, like a, it's almost contemporary compared to most of the costumes in Star Trek where you're yeah. like... I, you wouldn't see anyone wearing this in real life, but that jacket. Uh, but wait I could. till you see her holodeck outfit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so she gets angry because Worf will not put out. So Basically. she goes back to her room and she's like, Ugh, and she hits <laughs> something and breaks it. And I'm like, oh, that's your rage. I've broken hundreds of things <laughs> in rage. Well, she hundreds. broke a glass table. A glass yeah. table. Have any? Has anyone here broken a glass table? Uh, What's the worst thing you've broken? Intentionally. <sighs> An yeah, iPod. Sure. <laughs> An iPod? How, did, you, did it go into pieces or did it just not work anymore? Because that's it, totally it, different. It, it, well, it, they're so well made. <laughs> Apple makes great products. <laughs> they're so well made that it didn't break. It just stopped working. But I took it to my local. I took it to my local. That's not as impressive. That's not as impressive. I took it to my local Genius Bar, and they had it fixed up right away. Did they have Genius Bars back then with iPods by Steve Apple? (laughs) Yeah, they did. I, they, I think they did. Yeah, they did. I don't think yeah, so. I, I think Genius Bars it, came out. It wasn't no, no. a Genius they Bar. Did. It wasn't a Genius Bar, but it, they just would just help you. Yeah, they would, they would, yeah. yeah. According they would to J.J. Abrams, the first, or the Kirk's crew worked in a Genius Bar. <laughs> mm. yeah. The bridge of the Kelvin <laughs> Trek looks like an Apple store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kelvin, the guy from Home Alone. Yes. Um, <laughs> So Kelvin <laughs> McAllister, yeah, McCallister. Kelvin McAllister. <laughs> um, so so, um, Dina the Dina father. Troy Dina Troy shows up and she's like, "Hey, are you pissed off?" And she's like, "Yeah, we'll give it away, you idiot." No problem. And she's like, "All right, well, you know, I just I heard glass breaking, so I thought, oof, must be anger." Uh, 
<laughs> and she's she's like she's like ah yeah you got me I'm angry and then she's like you know how I get my anger out and she's like fucking she's like no 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 get your mind out of the gutter exercise and she's like oh exercise so fuck by it. fucking yeah <laughs> yeah yeah basically maybe and she knew actually to now that I think about it maybe she knew to some extent that he would like wind up in there like this whole thing it could be is like, it could be a lot of setting up you know yeah. captain's yeah. in on it she's yeah. in on it walks it might in be, and it's like it you might should be that go every to the every single holodeck. member of the crew is just this, working to get Worf laid like they all know and they're just like you know if you're oh, stressed go to the holodeck you know yeah. the y- the including that uh, lady uh, over the Skype call that sent oh she was in on it that sent her yeah <laughs> this is all one the Klingons like, were actors Starfleet <laughs> as a whole has been working <laughs> there, there is no frozen Klingon are you talking are you, are you <laughs> oh saying oh my god <laughs> are you saying oh that my these god. are you telling me that these that these people it's that were set up that these these capital <laughs> stormers were all actors <laughs> sent by Biden <laughs> to start yes. a romantic relationship. <laughs> yeah, pay, paid actors. Paid actors. God they damn it, They were bored. They were playing poker. Someone was like, you know what would be a really cool yeah. thing to do yeah. right now if we just set up this whole frozen Klingon thing and got oh, one play. Dude, it's right like, now. It's like <laughs> the movie The Game. <laughs> it's like the movie The Game. It's like the movie The Game with Michael Douglas, but it's about getting this guy laid, not mm. teaching him yes. a lesson. Yeah, it's like That's we're all so sick of hearing Gorf talk about bags of sand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, have you ever held a Klingon woman's breast? It feels like <laughs> like razor blades in a bag. <laughs> I, I imagine the blade is the nipple. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, blades. Wow. Um, so, so Deanna, uh, Dina Troy is like, hey, my lady friend, um, how, how about we put you in the uh, in the holodeck, and you can do a lot of things there, mainly fighting and fucking mm-hmm. and so she's like all right i'll give it a, give it a try i'm pretty upset right now and so she heads over she's like all right see i'll head over and do a simulation and so <laughs> and she smiles a lot at, at, at deanna troy a mm. lot a lot of smiling mm. so she shows up to the simulation wearing another outfit third outfit uh and this outfit's very like um kind of like Wild. bicycle bicycle like made for aerodynamics while fucking yeah <laughs> And it's this got, is like, like one of those like bad Olympian spandex. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's, it's a football, the football sport in Starship Trooper. Oh yeah, because because of the shoulder pads and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got those really prominent doesn't leather she, shoulder doesn't pads. Doesn't she put yeah. on the weird like? Oh, it's a Thanos glove. She has a power thing? glove. She'll find yeah, 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 power yeah. glove from before. It's a callback yeah. to the. First I do. Time. Yeah. I do like that. This exercise routine is the callback to to Worf and Riker working out together. Yeah, you know, yeah. one random cr- cold opening. With a stupid set of like a uh, like one yeah. ma- man made structure in the middle of a jungle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the set designers are like, we got to save this one. We know it's coming back. Yeah, it's coming back. <laughs> um, and then they have they a, even have they, Skeletor again. Yeah, yeah. 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 They had a bu- they have a bunch of like like workout simulation workouts, right? So they have like like they have a, a Vulcan one, an Earth one. They have a bunch of of a weird alien ones too. Mm-hmm. And she picks the Worf's um, calisthenics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> quote unquote. Um, she goes in there, and again, it's like a swampy. It's kind of like. Um, the the fucking Yoda planet a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Dagobah. No, Yoda, not Dagobah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and so, it, so he gets, she gets in there, and she's like, "Oh, power glove! I must put this on." It's it's like a weird like chainmail kind of glove. I don't understand how that works. How is that a weapon? It's just either. a strong punch. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't she get hurt? Like, because it would pierce her. It's not. <laughs> anyway. It doesn't make it's sense. so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, so the captain's like, "Hey, have you figured this thing out?" And he's like, "Ah, not really, dude." <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go work out. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. Go work out. Yeah, I gotta clear my mind. I gotta work out. I'll go write some horses. I mean, when Picard needed to work out, trying to solve Data's case, he started fencing. So that's true. So that's he, true. he can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> so so he goes to work out, and he sees that she's already in there, and he's like, "Oh, all right, okay, all right." So he goes in there and he and he catches the show, which is her beating the Birdman, a Skeletor, <laughs> and the Armadillo Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she just beats the shit out of him. And yeah. then he's, but he's just of, like he's just like staring creepy. Yeah, yeah, he's just like watching her from a distance, which is a little creepy. Yeah, yeah, and like she almost dies. And immediately when she went to the to the holodeck, I thought, oh fuck, she's gonna get shot by fucking. 
Dixon Hill, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they just show up in this simulation with the machine. Gun. <laughs> Don't you think it's crazy that like the the the, the simulator is always trying to kill people? But this version where it's about them trying to survive never kills them. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, um, it's just convenient. It's yeah. stupid. <laughs> so she fights all the, the creatures, Skeletor, uh, Armadillo, and Birdman. <laughs> Armadillo. And, and, uh, and fucking Worf is like, oh, I'm impressed, but not really. And he sets it to level two. He's like, mm. okay, you want to try level two? And then, and then they're fighting together. <laughs> and, and she almost punches him twice. She's yeah, like, ugh, ugh, I don't know whether I fight you or fuck you. Um, <laughs> yeah, for and, sure. There's a lot of tension. That scene was yeah, hot. Yeah, mm-hmm. hot. And then he hits swords, and he's like, "One, for, one for you, and one for me." Tip to tip, <laughs> and they start fucking fighting these ghouls, um, mm-hmm. and they're winning. And then it cuts to commercial course because we can't see. If you want to see the the R version, you 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 throw on your goddamn ExpressVPN. Yep. You head over to UPorn or RedTube or or you know all of yeah. those porn websites, You'll and you look it. up Worf fucks the half Earthling half. <laughs> the oh, you, half just remind, uh, you saying UPorn just reminded me that UPN actually was not one of the original networks to air it. Oh, it wasn't. What uh, UPN been? got it in like ninety five. Oh, okay, mm. okay. So, so what about UPorn? <laughs> um, when did you porn? <laughs> yeah, when, when, when did you porn start as a website? That's when it was. It was the launching series of you porn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you'd you know, have the to s- come up with the alternate name. The, always the fun names that they come up with. We don't, don't have know. to look at. Okay, look at this. The previous episode. It's called Manhunt. <laughs> yeah, they, they're, they're already they, they built in the the, yeah, the names. Yeah, yeah. The, the a, emissary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go before that. Yeah. The big goodbye. That could be one easily. Yeah. Go before that. Man. Haven. That's that's good. <laughs> hide and Q. Like yeah. hide the sausage. You know. Yeah. You know? Pen pals. <laughs> the battle. Yeah. You know. Justice. That that yeah, justice is a these little. These titles little are pretty, lonely yeah. among us. Perfect. Lo- oh yeah. yeah, that's the solo scene, right. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, shades of gray, fifty of them. Yeah. Shades of gray. <laughs> it's a solo scene <laughs> where so, no one has gone before. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's that's a that's an anal one. Um, so so you have. I tell you, these things write themselves. Um, so you have they they fight these people with the, the ghouls with swords, oh and then she's she's very aroused. She's like giving him like the googly eyes, the yeah. I want to kill you eyes, mm. and then and then they start doing the old foreplay, and they mm. like they do the the first they do the old let me smell your finger, let me smell you smell my <laughs> finger. Oh my God. I was, vis- I was visibly she reacting was very to this. Uncomfortable. I was like, I literally said, "There is not enough money in the world you could do to get me to do that to like a stranger, <laughs> like a, a person." I'm not like even I'm as not, an actor. You'd be as like, not, no. no, hell yeah. no. I'm not. I don't know where your hand has been. I'm not. I don't know you. Like, I'm not smelling your hand. Like that like is that. way too uncomfortable. I'm not doing who, it. Who, who the fuck wrote this? And they're like, okay, we got to write. We got to write foreplay for these two guys. And they're like, all right, all right. He's like, how about they smell each other's hands? And he's like, well, <laughs> let's talk to legal. And then legal is like, oh, how are they smelling their hands? And he's like, well, it's like a, it's like a, they're wafting the hand a little bit. And he's like, oh, whoa, I, I, like. yeah. no, I, I would almost smell any other place than that. <laughs> <laughs> so they each smell to see if they have like perfume or cologne. That's where yeah, you yeah. usually would, you would put it on. And then, and then he does this thing where he like he closes her hand, oh my and God. then he. Fucking presses so hard he really that breaks her hand. Literally, yeah. her her nails pierce her skin. Into her skin. Yeah, and she bleeds tapatio. Well, um, you're, you're not. <laughs> it's also possible that she's also clenching her own. Yeah, fist, yeah, it could be you know, both. No, it was, yeah, what it was what was it, it was implied that he was like pressing it, and but she could all, was, because she could be squeezing at the same ar- time. I think yeah, it's like together. But it was like yeah. an arousal thing. Like yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a like the equivalent of like pouring hot wax or candles. Like this foreplay, oh, hot tapatio like, on this, the hand. Like, this like <laughs> yeah, this like you it's know, a, it's, it's, like it's the whipped cream. It's the tapatio on the chest and the. You know, that's a, that's a that new one. I'm going to, I'm going to ask yeah. somebody. What was, gonna, that? What was that? Do you have any tapatio porn? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> 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 
what was that movie with with the ninja ninja the ninja three the domination you know the oh, scene yeah. with, with, with the, the tomato juice tomato yeah juice. with yeah the tomato juice the erotic same thing. the erotic tomato yeah, juice it's the same thing from ninja yeah. three the domination yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dan have you never seen this movie no there's an erotic oh, t- tomato juice scene oh beautiful God, now we gotta watch it for the film podcast yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah we can do that it yeah. is it is bonkers but it's probably uh, like a top 10 desert island movie because you can never get you discover it's so a many lot things of fun each time. yeah yeah you can okay. you can look out for different things in the movie each time like yeah. oh this time let's watch the kung fu oh this time let's watch just production design and yeah. the production design is wacky yeah yeah <laughs> especially her apartment <laughs> Let's see how many how many movies they rip off. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. Let's um, see how long this golf course fight scene can last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so they go to commercial. Eighteen and they, holes. They they <laughs> they eighteen hole it uh, during commercial break. Yeah. And uh, when they come back, they're all dressed again. They're they're not but sweaty. Their shoulder not pads are gone. So you know they took gone. something off. Yeah, yeah. The shoulder pads. Hell yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he starts fucking yelling out. Fucking he starts doing his like Akuna Matata fucking chant. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. she's like, whoa. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? It means no worries. <laughs> yeah. For the rest of your days. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he and he and and he's like, yeah, we we got to consummate our union with the oath. And she's like, no, 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 no. I thought I thought it was a it was a Akuna Matata meant it's a wonderful place uh, or whatever. He, <laughs> he, he starts singing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. And. And so, and so she's like, no, 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 no. And, and then, and then first she's angry that, that this dude won't fuck him and uh, fuck her. Sorry. And then, yeah. and then she's angry that he wants to like commit to her. Like yeah. the one dude that's not mm-hmm. running away. And then she's like, no dude, I was just here to hit it and quit it. And now I'm going to quit it. I'm going to go kill a bunch of Klingons. Get the fuck out of here. And he's like, but it's tradition. It's sacred tradition. We must do this. Akuna Matata dance. Uh, <laughs> And we he's very mate. upset. We very have mated, upset. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. And so you find out that like she's very human. She just likes to love him and leave him. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's, she's, she also on. seems to be painted as like a bit of a career woman because like what what seems to be going through her mind is like if I marry you, you idiot, we're gonna ruin both of our lives. Why yeah. is this a problem in the Federation? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't know why you can't just get get married and like you know do your things. You know, still. Yeah. Uh, here's a, here's my theory. Yeah. She does a lot of wet work for the Federation. Oh, she goes around maybe, killing people maybe. left and right. I can like, actually see her doing that, and and why you know? it was such a top secret thing. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. And he, and then she's like, "You're by the book, dude. You'll rat me out. You'll say like, oh yeah, this this I mean, or you're yeah, not yeah, That's an angle that they could have yeah. played up and really yeah. made the episode like work more. <gasps> it, it's like, just, he, dude. It's just as simple as she oh. just like just wants to you know fucking have fun, and she's here for a little that bit. Could, that's, I think I do believe that's also not, part of her motivation. It's not that for serious. Sure. Yeah. It's they, not that serious. They should have had a scene with her and um. Troy, where she's like, never get attached to anything you can't walk away from in six seconds flat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that and then she does, sense. and that's when she gets shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she holds like a dwarf's hand as she, as she dies. Um, so I still cry every time I see that scene. I don't know why. I do. Um, Michael Mann used to make good movies. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, and then he made a movie called Black Hat. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> and he made um, a movie called... The the one the fucking Johnny Depp as the what was it? Uh, Dylan Public Enemies. Uh, Public Enemies. Public Enemies. God, that movie oh, might have I been okay if it was shot at thirty FPS video. <laughs> it looks so bad. It's yeah. such a bad looking. Movie. And the thing is, I like the I like the movie. I like the writing in it. I just don't like how it looks. Even it the writing like mocap found, video game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and even the writing, I found it a little uneven. Like um, Christian, Chris, uh, uh, Bale. Uh, Christian, it's Christian Bale, right? Yeah. Am I crazy? Yeah, yeah. What do you His think char- it might be otherwise? I don't know. I my brain is Christopher Bale, <laughs> Hans Christian Anderson. Uh. <laughs> but but like I he his character feels like out of nowhere when it's introduced, where he's just chasing that guy. Yeah. Anyway, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck this- Michael Mann. Back to Star Trek. Unless Michael Sorry. Mann makes a Star a Star Trek movie, <laughs> then we'll we'll talk about that. <laughs> he forces uh, it to be shot at thirty FPS. <laughs> it's all it's got a blue hue to it. Um, <laughs> And so Worf shows up to the workstation again to the mm-hmm. to the bangatorium, yeah. And again, <laughs> so this is uh, this is the 
fourth costume change, but this is a repeat costume. So yeah, it doesn't yeah. count. Yeah. So she, this is her Bangatorium outfit. And so she, <laughs> she's trying to figure out like what to do with these ghouls. And she's like, yep. Only answer killing them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and uh, this time he brings, uh, um, data. And even she points out like, Oh, you brought an Android chaperone. Mm. Um, to the bangatorium. Yeah. She's like, how <laughs> dare you, dude? And then they have they have a meeting in the in the conference room and Worf is just sulking, dude. In the corner. He's yeah. just sulking. Um and she's like, Yep, I don't see it. I don't see a, a, a way out of this. We gotta kill him. And again, they go back and forth. It's like look, the the crew of the thong ship, they're gonna wake up horned up and there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing mm-hmm. And they talk about like, oh, what if we get there before they wake up and blah, blah, blah. There's mm-hmm. all these scenarios that end up being all bullshit, but it's just, <laughs> they're just trying to fill up the fucking episode. Yeah, um, yeah. And eventually they get there and they realize that they're awake, they're hungry and they're horned up and they start shooting the fucking ship. Right away. <laughs> right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but their technology is fucking old. They got an mm-hmm. old like Pinto, like Ford yeah. Pinto. And Somehow so Jordy, people didn't account for that back then. Yeah. <laughs> So Bad. Jordy figures out like, oh, the Pinto had a, a thing that if you do this, you could figure out where it's at. So the cloaking thing doesn't work. They track them yeah. down. Mm-hmm, mm. And then Worf thinks with his real head, not the other mm-hmm. one, because he's already <laughs> banged it out. Yeah. He's like, I got an idea. And then uh, you, you don't hear the idea because usually like they're like, okay, let's talk it out. They love to talk out things in this, in this show, but not this idea. Mm-hmm. And the idea they have is that... Uh, Worf will pretend that he's like the captain of the ship and basically makes them stand down. Does this count as a costume change? So they're wearing some it awesome does count. costumes. Yeah. But they, they are very much styled after other Klingon outfits we've seen in the show so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like really? modern Klingon command. Yeah, but these yeah, are nice, yeah. dude. Usually these the are Klingon nice. are disheveled and like d- dirty, yeah. and you know? Yeah, the, true, the, true. The, the replicator probably made like new ones for them. They're like, do you want it? You want new ones? Here we go. And then gives Yeah, them they look nice like Klingon. Ones. They look like Klingon royalty in this stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true, it's true. They look good. Yeah, they look like, like if... Rick Ross was going to make a music video where he was a Klingon. This is a shitty wear, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they they come on, they like open all hailing frequencies. And they, the, the Klingons are like, ah, we're horned up and we're angry. We're going to fucking kill people. Uh, and he's like, what are you doing with these humans, you piece of shit? And he's like, you calm down, you goddamn thong people. He's like, calm down and shut up, dude. Uh, don't talk to me that way. I'm a fucking captain. <laughs> look at me. You think anybody just sits in this fucking chair? No, look at chair. look at my look at my costume, Brent fucking Neo, dude. Then like oh, your old busted shit, and so they start arguing, and basically he gets them to stand down, and he agrees. the The thong people agree that they're gonna let this um, Klingon Karen board the ship, and then they're gonna wait for the other Klingon vessel to show up and and calm everybody down, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they agreed to it. They're like, all right, we'll stand down, dude. Surprisingly uh, easy. That was yeah. really easy. You know, yeah. All, all Worf had to do was threaten their lives. And yeah. <laughs> apparently the Klingons respond to those. To such they do. Threats. Klingons respond to threats yeah. very well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they I do like. They don't consider it dying in glorious battle. When you just threaten their lives, I guess. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, shout oh, outs to Diedrich Bader. Yes. I was going to say, this is actually Diedrich Bader's very first appearance on television. So, Good for you, Diedrich. Yeah. Uh, more, more well known as uh, one of Drew Carey's best friends on the Drew Carey show. And also the voice of Batman in The Brave and the Bold and lots of other Batman properties, including Harley Quinn. Wait, yeah, he was he also the, the apartment neighbor in Office Space. Yeah, and he yeah. was also the karate instructor in. Um, uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, Napoleon uh, Dynamite. Yes. Wait, who yeah. does he play in this, this episode? Oh, he plays he just, just one of the uh, comms he's people in the, in the background. background. He's yeah. very. Yeah, he was like in Worf's position. Yeah, he goes like um, shields holding, sir. Like, yep. that's, he just yeah. says random oh, phrases. Oh yeah, I see yeah. him in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is he a regular? First, is he? No, the, it's uh, his, it's his one and only TNG appearance. And oh. it, but but this is I I wonder if this is how he got SAG. Because this is his very first TV appearance, so oh yeah, maybe yeah, maybe he Love had you, an, Diedrich. Yeah, yeah. 
Do you know Good him? Cool guy. Those, there, we went to a Comic Con once perfectly. where he he showed up and he brought his his kids and that was adorable. And yeah, they were dressed up it, as Black Canary and Rachel Ghoul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he like it, it was like the last year of Brave and the Bold's. Like uh, it was the last season, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, he 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 cried over being able to have the opportunity to be such a cool character and all that. Like he Batman. really cares about being Batman. So yeah. It's it's heartening to see. Which is why they brought him back for Harley Quinn, and he's great in that too. Awesome. Yeah. Um, not without my Dietrich. Um, <laughs> so that was basically it. Basi- so the, the last scene is them saying goodbye. Uh-huh. Um, he goes to the, to the transport transporter room and he's like, Hey, uh, you've been relieved to beat it. Yep. And, and he's like, um, he's like, uh, he's like, I, I'm, I'm going to take over. And he's like, Oh, I'll get you. He winks. He's like, you want to, so why do we, why do we think that he did? Do we think that Worf did that so that he can get one last, Little, little, gooch? little kiss, little something. I yeah. thought so. Like, I thought, I thought yeah, so. One yeah, and I, private I, moment. I think, I think, I think he so. wanted a private moment, but he's too stoic slash shy to initiate it. So that's why he doesn't really say anything until because he didn't starts. have to do that. He could just been like exactly. He could, so he could have just yeah with. walked away or <laughs> stayed there with Miles, and Miles teleports her away. Yeah, but he clearly wanted something. Yeah, a little kiss. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like um, he was counting on her to get angry at him about it. Yeah, and then and then she like takes her clothes off and is like one more time. Uh, <laughs> but she was yeah, like, that hey. would have been the perfect opportunity. Yeah, and then and, credits uh, roll right there. Yeah, yeah. 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 And and <laughs> technically, I mean, it, it, if Miles, I was gonna say Miles Morales. Oh, what's the other? <laughs> O'Brien. 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 Yeah. If Miles uh, O'Brien. <laughs> Was there? He could have banged. So he, so Warp could have banged her, and then her clothes are off, right? And then the, she puts the clothes in the transporter next to her, mm-hmm. and then when she appears in the Klingon ship, she's wearing them. That's how uh, fucking awesome uh, Miles O'Brien is. He's like, I'll, <laughs> I'll put them on while I transport you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that um, would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, they're like, Hey, let's agree to disagree. Uh, would you have taken the oath? And basically, like he's like, yeah. He basically tells her like he loves her, but he understands. He's not complete without her. But yeah. that's that's yeah. the uh, that's what adds to my confusion about her character. I mean, it's I mean, not the confusion or my dislike is because in this last scene, she seems so she seems kind of upset. But then she's like, "Oh, I almost took the oath." But then like, yeah. But then like, you know, you're you know, aren't you sad? Like, aren't you gonna like say something? Like, she wants her cake it, and eat it too. Yeah, that's, it that's feels like she it. does want her cake and eat it too. Yeah, exactly. That's what it feels like. She's very like hot and cold. Like, what I is it? That. This is this is it. And he's just like, "Well, yeah, this is it. You didn't take the oath." Well, so, I, cause I mean, it's because I don't think she's. It. I don't think she's like written as a rational character. I think she's written as an emotional character. Yeah. So I right. think because of that, she isn't <laughs> logical. <laughs> and I just I, feel bad for Warp. He's just like I do. Yeah, I do feel bad. For Warp. He's like, yeah. you didn't take the oath, so goodbye. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what you it want. It feels me like to do. Worf did nothing but like, like kind okay. of just be there. <laughs> he's like, all right. I mean, he got something out of it, so good for him. But yeah, I mean, he, he got he got something he got yeah. something out of it. If yeah. you know what I mean, out of yep. his body. He definitely uh, he's a little sick puppy <laughs> trying to act tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they hold hands. They they do the the Klingon hold hand. Thing. Yeah. yeah, which Marvin and I we had we had a disagreement. I thought it was. Um, Marvin thought maybe I think you said you thought it was just them like just holding hands, and I thought it was something a little bit more sexual, like a, uh, but- a like a like a, a step before the hand bleeding. You mean you like know? a like like second base, maybe? Yeah, like I said, maybe that's the equivalent of like a hand job or like a you know <laughs> like a you know something like that. It's and- literally a hand job. Cause, cause it's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I was yeah. like, I think that was meant to be something. A little more risque. Well, you know? well, look at this. If the if the if the tapatio hand, hot hand, is is <laughs> yeah. is foreplay, the holding of the hand is just one step closer. It's one step away from the tapatio hand. It's like yeah. an over the hand, over the pants. Well, then I, it's, it's know, like it's uh, like a it's like jean jamming. I feel like then, it's like then it could be it could be yeah. analogous to like you know how like a a, a kiss can either be yeah. you know a, a sign of affection or it could be or a make out like session. It, it, like yeah, it, there's a spectrum mm-hmm. of what it can mean, right? Yeah. yeah. I feel so like this I definitely here. I was team like this is a make out. This is over the pants. This is <laughs> you want everyone. This to is make giving out. me you know this yeah. is giving me first second base. Yeah. Now it, kiss is what I used to. Call, yeah. um, I used to call it jean jamming. 
<laughs> yeah. This is jamming. giving. <laughs> yeah, key jamming. Oh, jamming. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is <laughs> this is giving dry humping. This is just yeah. the tip. I thought this I heard is, you say you jabbing, know. so I was like, whoa. Well, it's a also, little bit. It's also, also, also it's uh-huh. also in some some regions called gene jabbing. Uh, <laughs> in other regions, it's called gene jamming. Yeah. Mm. Um, gene jam session. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I, that's hoagie. what I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a gene hoagie. <laughs> yeah, in other cultures, it's known as the tapatio hot hand. Um, but um, so I, like, I like, like, like Riker walks in and he goes, "Ah, oh, the tapatio hot hands." <laughs> yeah, the old like, tapatio oh, hot God. hand. He's yeah. like, "Enough said." I walk away. They call it something else in Tabasco. <laughs> he's like, he's like, unless, unless there's room for two in this hot hand. Yeah, I Get got another pants. bottle. Yeah, yeah, I got a, <laughs> got a travel size. Um, so overall, I like this episode. It was fun. I mean, it's better than other Uber episodes where they're Uber <laughs> oh, people. Yeah. And it's, uh, at least I think it's one of the better some... episodes this season. Yeah. To me. yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Actually, what would you um, what would you rate it, Ricardo? Uh, I can't give it a sixty nine because that doesn't exist. <laughs> so somewhere between six and nine, seven. Okay, all right. Seven, right, and half, you, seven and a half. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Sorry. I'd give it probably like a five. Oh, okay. All right. Just like a, a solid five. Of, five. I yeah, mean, it's out of ten. In so. all the episodes that I've seen so far, that in five involve you know a lady coming on board and <laughs> you know some kind of swoon, you know enchantment of some kind. Like I much preferred Irish lady coming aboard with her washing mm. of feet. And all okay, that. So like, I love that. Do you tend not of... to be a, a fan of the old flame episodes? No, I just think she just annoyed me. Her her character, like, I just didn't like she. You didn't like she that was she wasn't written. logical. I didn't like the hot and cold. I didn't like. It. I didn't like how many times they rehashed what I felt like the same conversation. I didn't like the editing. I mean, it was just kind of slow and like it was just the vibe was different than I feel like it could have been. All so right, that's why I give it a five. All right, all right. What about you, Dan? Um. I'm right there with Ricardo at about 7.5. Um, okay. What I what okay. I liked about the episode a lot was like it it fleshed out Worf in a different direction, um, mm-hmm. and like what it did for Worf as a character, I I, I like because when he's arguing with her in in the Bangatorium, <laughs> like uh, he he has this one line about like my experiences on this ship taught me yeah that, that you know that there are other solutions to problem or that that problems yes. can have multiple solutions i love that and like that one line it's like you know what that that's really cool and representative of Worf. yeah and it's it's a it's a growth that we're seeing in a Worf is I, he's a he's a pretty underrated character because he's like the he's like the butt of a lot of jokes for tng but right. i think he's a genuinely pretty interesting character and yes. I, I do like episodes like this that really show that that he can be really interesting I think I'm going to be kind of an outlier and give it an 8.5. Wow. I kind of really like this episode. I think there's two main problems with this episode. One is the pacing. I Mm -hmm. think some parts of it are a little too slow. And the other is the direction. I think this is a really poorly directed episode. Like all of the conversation scenes Mm -hmm. are really boringly shot. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. you can't. For a Star Trek show, you could not figure out a more by the book boring way to direct this episode, I think. And it kind of usually it's like fine, whatever. But in an episode like this that was very talky, it mm-hmm. damaged it a lot, I think. They needed the director that did remember he did there's one dude that did like the handheld and like uh, Rob need, Bowman, yeah. Yeah, Rob Bowman yeah, he's knows good. what's up, dude. Yeah, he he's, fucks, he's dude. he his uh desire for stylish cinematography um yeah. works in a show. Like this yeah, was not Rain of Fire. That, yeah. Did he? Did he do Rain of Fire? I hope he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, we can, we can, we can check it out really quick. But also, the other thing about the episode is that did anyone recognize uh, Klingon Karen? Um, yeah, not, uh, Karen. she looked kind of familiar to me, but I wasn't sure if it was just because I'd already seen this episode a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, there were the Schizoid Man episode with that old man, and they had a Klingon doctor. Mm-hmm. Was that her? That's the same actor. No way, dude. Yeah, is yeah. she meant so, to be the same character or the same? No, no, no. I don't think so. They're, they're, but they already had both. a headpiece molded for her, so they probably just <laughs> yeah. wanted to they use were it like, again. Eh. So the original, pr- so that her name was Doctor Salar, that Klingon lady, oh. and I think their original premise would have been really interesting because the original premise was supposed to be that Doctor Salar comes back because of something, and she and Worf hit it off. Oh, and have a. Re- so think about it: a Vulcan and a Klingon. 
starting a relationship. That oh, wait, the Vulcan really- doctor. Okay. Yeah, the Vulcan doctor. Yeah, yeah. I thought the you said was- Klingon doctor a, sec- a minute ago. Oh, I'm Am sorry. Wrong? Maybe I did. Maybe yeah, I did. Yeah, you but- did. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I meant Vulcan doctor. The- right, then, never mind got, my head You got rain of fire in your thing. brain, dude. <laughs> By thing- the way, he did direct brain of fire. <laughs> he did direct. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. In that case, yes, absolutely. Uh, she has the exact same expression. Yeah, yeah and that would have been a really interesting premise i think Mm -hmm. a returning minor character coming back and they can't be more different right this this mm -hmm. made a good i I don't know i i I like this because of the whole top of the hot end (laughs) it's funny because the the, the director cliff is that is that some hot sauce behind you it looks like (laughs) yeah yeah. is it getting hot in here or is it my hot sauce (laughs) Is it getting hot in here? Is, is it just my hand? Or is, it, or is it just your sauce? Is there hot sauce <laughs> coming down my face right now? My it's hands? funny because the director, uh, Cliff Bowl, he had he said he envisioned what a Klingon sex scene would be like. What? And he in said this? he imagined there's a lot of blood and bones breaking. <laughs> I mean, that's into people. I, I knew somebody who had like a blood fetish oh i'm sure yeah yeah there's and definitely that. her desire was to have sex in a bathtub of blood oh yeah. wow and she did i oh. i i had a uh, but she uh, was also simultaneously germaphobic oh that doesn't that make any sense hard. right <laughs> like, how sounds you, like a difficult you, life to lead how are you germaphobic but then yeah. you want to have sex in a tub full of blood unless it was her own blood that she had saved <laughs> well i mean obviously she can't l- use it i mean she used fake blood well she still, she what, what if she what if she took her own blood saved it in a blood bank and then uh, was maybe all of yeah it. i don't know i don't know it just seems I like need, a weird I need all stance. my blood back please <laughs> yeah but, you know maybe i'd like to, I'd like to, to withdraw all my blood <laughs> Maybe she was a Klingon in her past life. I don't know. The idea of a blood bank working like a bank. Yeah. You you deposit some blood in Mm -hmm. case you need it. It's a real thing. So, you know, I'm not surprised. (laughs) Really? Blood banks that work like banks where you can get your own blood back? Sure. Why not? I don't know. (laughs) All right. Well, just take your own blood. Just take Um, your own blood. It's fine. The emissary. It's a Klingon episode. And it was also an episode of Newbie Star Trek. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks, Sarah, for joining us for the first time. I think it was Thank a lot you of fun. Thank you for having me. Am I the fir- I'm the first guest on the Wait, show. Wait, is this actually the, the end of the episode? First no, time caller, yeah, yeah, long time listener. <laughs> I, I, I'm for, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. That's me for sure. Well, if you, if you guys have liked the episode. Listener. If you guys have been liking the episode, you guys listen out there. I love the TikTok. Love the socials. <laughs> love you guys. <laughs> Love well, Star Trek. If the people listening have been liking the podcast, you, it'd be great if you could uh, head over to Apple Podcasts or Podcast Addict and uh, give us a review. That'd be really helpful. It helps with our, you know, metrics and whatnot. Blah, blah, blah whatever. Yes, be, be truthful. If you, you want to give us a bad review, go, give us a bad review. We don't yeah, give shit. I'll take it. We'll take it, dude. We'll take it. We'll take it in the butt. If you yeah. stop listening that's like awful. 13 minutes in because we didn't talk about Star Trek yet, that's <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. That's totally fine. Understandable. <laughs> Understandable. You yeah. don't like fucking Vin Diesel. Get it. <laughs> also, uh, if you would like to send us an email, uh, you can send us an email at contact at newbiestartrek.com. And this week, we have an email from someone named Justin. Ooh, um, it's Justin. Called, it's, Hello, not a, Justin. it's not a question. It's a clarification. It's like a, a neat, neat trivia thing. Do you think it's people. Justin Lin, the, <laughs> the director of the Fast and the Furious movies and one of the Star Trek movies? Maybe. Mm, wow. No. Yeah. Maybe he's like, hey, listen. <laughs> he's like, I love your style, guys. <laughs> that movie I made. <laughs> uh, so, so one of the so this is what Justin says. One of the fish people in the episode before, so he's talking about the um the Admiral Akbar's from last episode, the Antedians. Uh, yeah. yeah, the Antedians. Uh, was oh, played. the ugly ones! The yeah, ones the ugly that are- ones. Yeah, yeah, the gray <laughs> ones. Excuse me, they're actually, a that- handsome race. <laughs> <laughs> they were actually, they were actually terrorists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, right. So a one of them, race of terrorists. <laughs> one of the fish people in that episode was played by drummer Mick Fleetwood. Really, of the British rock band Fleetwood Mac. Really? Whoa. Wow. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of popular rock stars and actual actual royalty that acted in Star Trek. So no I guess way, we should dude. be on the lookout for more shit like that. Like just I guess for in fun? general, yeah, we've been seeing 
a lot of celebrity cameos. They weren't necessarily celebrities then, but like like Dudrick Bader, but also like Terry Hatcher. We saw yeah, in the Fox, yeah. We saw. Oh my god, not, not Hatcher, cameos, yeah. but it, it's like um, I think parts, not, they're not parts. they're not recurring roles. They're guest they're stars. Guest stars. Guest stars. Yeah, yeah. guest. A lot of guest stars. Yeah. Not yeah, that they were, I'm, I'll bet that they weren't using those as like a draw, though. Yeah. It's just more like, hey, this is a fun thing. Eventually, they will. There are some really, really big names they start putting in some of the later seasons that are like, yeah, they brought them in as a guest star cameo because they wanted. Well, yeah, that okay, point, that I can I believe. Mean, but at least, like for yeah. instance, like uh, that fish man, like there's no oh, no way we would have known I, it was him. No, but they're doing it for fun. They might exactly. might have been yeah, fans yeah. of the show. Yeah. So, yeah, that's exactly. So I actually knew of the Mc, McFleetwood um, trivia, but forgot. It's because he was a fan of the show, and he's like, "Just put me in however you want." Like best exactly. we can do that's is always a, how it starts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Best we it, can do is a fish costume, and you dip your head in yeah. some weird squid yeah. thing. And so yeah, yeah, you got a piece of the same thing happening in the sixties, Batman. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the best we can do. Okay, are you up for that, Nick Fleetwood? Are you are you okay with eating all this raw squid? <laughs> yeah, and he's like, yes. oh, I, oh, I, you know, you think he sounds like like um, <laughs> Jason Statham? He's like, oh, I, <laughs> fuck yeah, Mike. <laughs> I Jason don't, Statham. I don't think our opinion matters in regards to that question. <laughs> Jason Statham, would you like to eat all this raw squid? It's like, yeah, it's just like me eagle pie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like me mom's pie. <laughs> Thanks, Justin, for reminding us of that trivia. We'll Very be on the cool lookout trivia. for more shit like that. That yeah. was fun. Yeah. So if you want to send us an email, again, that's contact at newbiestartrek.com. Also, we have a bunch of other shit we do. We have the Fugitive Frames Film Podcast, which Ricardo is going to do a month of Halloweeny stuff. Yeah, because October is coming up. So we'll, we'll try to do <clears throat> we'll try to do mini mini sods, like thirty minute stuff. Of of um, I'm, I'm getting different people. I'm getting one guy you might have heard if you have listened to that podcast. His name is Sean Wicks. He used to do some work for the Egyptian uh, theater, and mm-hmm. uh, maybe I'll have him talking about um, the Universal Horror. Um, oh that would be great yeah 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 yeah, yeah. the oh, old ones be- or their the old failed ones. reboots come on dude there's come only on, one dude. failed re- <laughs> yeah <laughs> the that one died in one movie <laughs> <laughs> the you mean the dark universe the dark is cinematic that, is universe? that part of the mummy is the the mummy that one yeah it the, was supposed the tom to cruise mummy was supposed well, actually, to kick it off yeah. actually um there's a new one now there's a reboot it, they had a soft reboot, and the the first movie of that is Invisible Man. The Invisible Man is part of it. Uh, but you think they're going to actually make oh, that part of this universe, or are they just yeah, being like, eh. um, well, it's so wait, okay, Invisible Man okay. with that with the girl with the yeah, um yeah. with the Scientologist lady, yeah, uh, oh, Mary okay. Elizabeth Winstead. Um, <laughs> wait, is that her name? No, no, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart. Well, Mary. <laughs> What? What's her what? name? Elizabeth something. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is the girl from who plays no, Mary Mary, Mary, Flowers. Mary Elizabeth Moss. Mary Elizabeth Moss. No, Moss. Elizabeth, something Moss. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss. Moss. Yes, Moss. she's, yeah. 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 she's yeah. the. She, where did the Mary come from? I don't know where that came from. But. Well, there is a Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, she's a Scientologist lady. That's right. Yeah. But I mean, she she's a good invisible person. So yeah. Um, yeah. So Lee Wynell is doing that, and then the next, then his next movie is Wolfman with Ryan Gosling. Mm, but are they? But are do you think they're actually setting up a universe, or are they just being like, let's make good I, movies I, first? And then- I think they're just letting him make good movies, mm, and then okay. they're going to see if they can mash them up. But the dude who did the Lady Ghostbusters movie, he's doing like a Avengers version of. Oh, that's gonna fail. Oh yeah, Avengers yeah, yeah. version of what? <laughs> like um the Universal monster movies, like oh, the Monster god. Squad, basically. Oh god. Mm, okay. But for it's adults, like, if you know what I mean. That's not. Ima- imagine the tone of ghost, Tom the female Williams. Ghostbusters, but with the Universal monster. But I don't even understand yeah. how that's supposed to work, because like, it, oh god, it, are they actually trying to develop a team of monsters? Yeah, they get to them fight crime. <laughs> to fight, yeah, they're, they're gonna fight Thanos. <laughs> Mm. What yeah, threat would would require all of them to band together? The, they, they a have, bigger they, mummy. They have to. They have to get a bigger mummy, or they have to travel back in time and kill Tolkien. A vampiric so he never makes mummy. such shitty fucking yeah. Lord of the Rings books. <laughs> oh, yeah. they have to kill Tolkien. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no! They have to kill Tolkien. They have to kill Mary Shelley. Yeah, and Peter Jackson. So he never makes that shitty fucking those shitty movies ever again. <laughs> Oh um, man, we've our we really need to have our audience. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> now, the secret's out. I hate Lord of the Rings. Oh, Aww, that hasn't been a what? secret for a while. <laughs> but some people might have forgotten. Yeah, yeah so yeah. we need to remind them to stop listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> 
Stop so that's it. happening. That's uh, happening on the film podcast. Stop it's, us right it's now. More shitting on Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we have, we have the, the Fugitive Fame Film Podcast, and then we also have Fugitive Games. And right now, uh, we are going through Arkham Origins and uh, Paper Mario the Origami King slowly with big parts revealing. But the big thing we've started doing is we started streaming the DLC for The Outer Wilds, Echoes of the Eye, which we had one stream so far at the time of this recording. And it took a little while to get there, but it is fascinating already. And it's freaking Dan the fuck out. <laughs> Boy, is it. <laughs> like, as, as we stream into October, I'll be plenty scared. Yeah, it's the closest I've seen D- D- Dan being scared during one of our LPs. <laughs> well, as, like, aside from our pre- like Outer Wilds like base game. I think, like, the fish in Outer yeah. Wilds was kind of, like, just kind of tense for you. But I think when you saw those photos, the slideshow, you, I think you were legit like, oh, my God. Oh, what I hate Jesus. what I kind of hate most about those photos is that I have to advance them myself. Yeah. <laughs> and watch them move frame by frame. Exactly. As they, as they get closer. Cuz cuz like every time I see something I don't like, if I hit the next thing and it's just worse, it it, it gets worse. <laughs> yeah, it does. It gets closer and closer and the mouth opens wider and wider. Stop in the mu- oh, oh dude, like okay, j- just for those listening, um that DLC does wonderful things with music. It's so well queued up like mm-hmm, they sync mm-hmm. like uh the, the music goes with um your discoveries very very well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is why i get so fucking freaked out yeah 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 yep. well if you watch fugitive games you will recognize my voice and if That's you like true. my voice you should go watch some fugitive games because i'm in a lot Oh, she's in videos. all of the Phoenix, Phoenix, Wright. Phoenix Wright games, yeah, and you'll both hear of our Phoenix all Wright LPs. Yeah, yeah. I have been voicing voices in Phoenix Wright for years. <laughs> so technically, <laughs> like one point five years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. one and a half okay, okay. years. That was yeah. a solid gig. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been paid. <laughs> it was a solid gig. Solid. <laughs> paid in kisses uh, and love and, and hugs. No exposure. Hands. <laughs> an exposure. We paid you an and exposure, Sarah. hands yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know. So, so if you guys want to see all that shit we do, you can go to fugitiveframes.com and you'll see a bunch of links that'll take yeah. you to where you want to go. Go to newbiestatham.com. That yeah. that's, that's real too. Works. That's still real. <laughs> still works. It's still real. I'm not joking, Sarah. You can go to newbiestatham.com right now and it'll go to Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> I never told her. And where can oh, they really? <laughs> And where can the good people find us on the porn sites and the alternate? Well, uh, Dan's uh he next month, maybe hopefully for Thanksgiving, he's gonna start an OnlyFans. Drop your OnlyFans um, handle yeah. and you know. Yeah, all of Drop again, your cash it, app and your add, only hand, add only tapatio, add tapatio hands on <laughs> only fans. <laughs> tapatio hands. Tapatio. There's a market for it somewhere. Yeah. I'm sure. Oh, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, for bleeding hands. Yeah, yeah. Bleeding tapatio. Hands. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was um, that. If you want to find all that stuff, that's at fugitiveframes.com. And then next week. We're going to watch Peak Performance, which is uh, another porn title. Yeah. <laughs> what <the> fuck? Absolutely. <laughs> it's a porn title. Peak Performance. And also, what uh, could this be about? <laughs> for, for many people, it's a very memorable episode for the season. And many people believe this should have been the finale. Oh. For, for oh, very serious? serious reason. For the for season finale. Oh, it should by have been the time the we get to the season finale, we, we will all understand why people thought that. <laughs> yes. There's, mmm. Oh, boy. Will we understand? <laughs> I can't wait for that season. Will we Nelly understand? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> but that's going to be next week. And until then, everybody stay safe. Uh, don't get the COVID. Get your vaccinations. No. Yeah. Fucks. Get your, uh, <laughs> your, VP, get your VPN. Yeah. Or get your, your internet v- condom yeah. or your yeah, real yeah. condoms and get Protect vaccinated. your internet and yeah. yourself. Yeah. Right. And ease. This could be you, but you fucking around, dude. Yeah. You idiots. <laughs> See, now we're actively looking at other sponsors that aren't ease. Yeah, dude. Bitch. SMH. <laughs> yeah. We're looking at Tabatio Hot Sauce. Yeah, if you want to sponsor Oh, my us. God. That yeah. would be sick if, yeah, a, if a sponsor was El Tabatio. Yeah. Holy shit. 
I would be, be so happy. <laughs> yeah. Let's just send this a, a copy of this. Let's just send them a copy of this. <laughs> they, 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 they'll stop listening five minutes in. They're like, we don't, we don't. They'll be like, we, what is we, this? This is, yeah. <laughs> this is not the brand we want to associate with El Tapatio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys mentioned our brand with fucking. Uh, or they'll say they fucking, love it. They're that's like, true. that's an avenue we haven't explored. Yeah. We're interested erotic, in OnlyFans. Tapatio the erotic hands. hot sauces. Yeah. <laughs> All know. right. We'll we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>